What is going on, people? I can tell you, if you're a filmmaker right now, you need to listen to this fucking show. We've got two special guests today. Leslie Goyer and Michelle Inglehart. These two wonderful filmmakers shared with us their film, Maysville. And I gotta tell you something, this fucking movie is bad ass. And we go into so many facets of this film, from production to planning to financing, locations, how they did this thing. And it's their first fucking movie. You wait till you guys see this film. It's absolutely phenomenal. Some great stuff we talk about in this podcast episode. It's probably one of my favorite ones we've done. Because they go into one specific topic that is truly important to me and our team. And I think it resonates very well on this show. So tune in and catch this motto that these two filmmakers have. These wonderful ladies show us how to make movies. Pay attention to this, guys. And welcome to Around the Reel. Welcome to Around the Reel with your hosts, Aaron Carlson, Charles Lawson, and Samantha Hanna. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. That's right. <laughs> Okay, so everybody can hear do, everybody. Actually. Yes. Okay. Wait, everybody welcome. can see everybody. I can see everybody. All right. Cool. Are well, you guys ready? And Michelle's yeah. all quiet, so she must be sitting on something that's like really big, so she can see everything. Yeah. She's she... very expressive <laughs> with her all facial expression. All knowing. Yeah. She's not fucking around. She's serious about this. Look at her. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting over a cold, so my voice is a little uh, hoarse. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. It sounds cool. Not though. COVID. Look. I it's, tested six times and it's not COVID, wow. which it was, so I can build some immunity out of this miserable week I've had. Oh, I hear you. But, uh, anywho, <laughs> I feel it. I'm a little hoarse. That's I okay. I had That's to. Con- okay. I had when I had the moment. My husband thought it was sexy. He's like, "Well, you sound like a man." I was going to say that too, though. It does sound sexy. Isn't well, that that's because we grew up, grew up with oh, Kathleen Turner. At- Oh yeah, we did. Kathleen Turner. We yes. grew up with Kathleen Turner. We yes. think it's sexy. Your husband, Kathleen. Yeah. Yes. yes, that's gangster shit. I love it. Yeah. When I had pneumonia, I had to convince these guys that I didn't have COVID. I just had pneumonia. He had COVID. <laughs> I didn't have COVID. He had COVID. The doctor had me tested, dude. I think five I, times. You know, you know, it's bad when you say I just had pneumonia. I know. Right. That's <laughs> just pneumonia. Yeah. That's exactly what we were saying. Interesting the other day. Yeah. Pneumonia used to be a bad thing, right? right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> pneumonia. Now it's like, oh, it's just pneumonia. You're going to be out of work for like a month or something, right? And no, oh, you don't have COVID? Can you be here tomorrow? I can't breathe. <laughs> what was funny is he had a respiratory infection and he was just talking shit like two weeks before <laughs> on the show. About, hey, you know, I got a respiratory infection. It's what you get prior to uh, getting pneumonia. Right. And then he got fucking so can pneumonia. We prefer- can we preface this? Was it an upper? Respiratory infection? Yes, yes it was. Today, lower, lower respiratory infection. It was an upper respiratory infection. <laughs> My lord. Well, from what I understand, that's the one you want. That's the one you. That's true because you get the, if you get the pneumonia down in the lower parts of your lungs, that's where the decay starts faster. You oh guys, my goodness! Uh, you guys know too much shit. Yes, we know, know way too much yeah, shit. You know, know why, Aaron? Know. You what? know why we know so much shit about being sick? Tell me. We're white people. Oh yeah, white people know a lot of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I have to. I have high blood pressure. And what's what's the other one? Sickle cell anemia. Yeah, that's about all I got to worry about. And cancer. <laughs> Alcoholism. We lost, you know, yeah. you have a, We yeah. lost yeah. Leslie. Yeah. Yeah. Have it. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All of us. That's fine. That's fine. Um, you guys are lucky to have me on the show today. By the way. Really? Yeah. You know yep. why? What's that? I'll tell you why. Because I usually don't work on January the eighth because it's Elvis's birthday. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Name five Elvis okay. songs. You're I'm plugging sorry. up my heartstrings here because I'm a pretty big Elvis fan. See what I'm Same. saying? Dude, that's straight from DC Cab. Come on, that's Gary Busey. Dude, folks. love me tender. <laughs> okay, so wait a second. Let's. Okay, so I'm going to throw out a challenge. Okay, what? Name five. Oh, no. no, no, not to you, Leslie, to Aaron. Oh. Name five. You, but Elvis Leslie, songs. because you're such a big Elvis fan, you will be the judge. Aaron, oh. name, name five Elvis songs. Oh, Kentucky Rain. I didn't say sing oh, five sorry. songs. I said okay. name <laughs> song. Kentucky five Rain. There's um, the Kentucky Rain. I don't remember, I don't remember the name of it. Yeah, One for right. the money, two for the show. Oh, oh, blue suede shoes. Blue suede shoes. I have to sing the song to get there. Um, <laughs> I 
I, fuck, I don't know the name of them. I don't know the name of them, but I know the song. How about Jailhouse Rock? Okay, Jailhouse Rock. Yeah, I know that one. I'm so Why glad. do you get on me itching like a man on a fuzzy tree? That's the best line in, in music. Itching like a man on a fuzzy tree. It's a- <laughs> Is that the name of the song? No, it's a lie. It's all, all shook up. All shook up. All shook up, yeah. Which makes sense because you can hardly understand most of the lyrics in All Shook Up. So, of course, you don't understand uh-huh. that it's said uh-huh. in the song. Mm-hmm. It's only like four songs. I mean, four lines of, of a song, and it just repeats over and over and over. But that was all he needed because the man looked good. Mm-hmm. See, he got down. Mm-hmm. You know what he did, though? Because he, he, he imitated a lot of black people. <clears throat> of course. <laughs> well, that's what all rock and roll kind of did. And that's what we learned that, the yeah. last show. Okay. And yeah, Talk, yeah, our previous guest was Switchblade Blake. Absolutely. Yes. Tupelo, Mississippi, man. That Those were his people. That's who he grew up with in his Ooh. one room house. See? And, you know. You know a lot he, about Elvis. I love it. Yeah, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> I don't. He knows, he knows, he the knows quote that from DC January Cab. the 8th is yeah. his birthday. You, know, I, I know you want to see something interesting? Pull up Aaron, Elvis's. Um, uh, his mugshot from when he was arrested. I saw it with the black eye. A little bit of black eye, yeah. Bit, yeah. Dude, Dude, Elvis, very interesting little story there. Elva took Elva took a pop, bro. He got he got jabbed. Well, he had all those moves. He just couldn't move out of the way. <laughs> you got, yeah, you got to learn some Miyagi do and fucking. <laughs> Come on, Granny Gray is the biggest Elvis fan there is. That's true. Uh, Sam's grandma is like. Oh my gosh. She still gets moist when you say Elvis, and she's old. <laughs> she doesn't fuck around. Like seriously, Grandma does not mess L- around. Ladies, here. this is where I come at the show and say, "Have you ever listened to one of these episodes before you agreed to be on the I show?" I hope so. <laughs> we did. Okay. okay good. God, I hope it wasn't with their. We did. Yeah. So yeah, you know you're what you're getting yourself into. Somewhat prepared. You guys are so prepared. That's the thing that makes you guys stand out a little bit different. Is you keep it real. You you don't pretend to be someone that you're not. No. And it, it, it makes us relax, and it makes us it makes it fun for everybody. Oh, thank you. Thank you very that much. Means, dude. It do, it means a lot. And you but know honestly, I mean, how can you be more ghetto than us? Well, I'm trying to put up a front today. <laughs> I had an emotional week. Like yesterday, I had a breakdown. I oh, did. I had a break, did. I had he, a breakdown. A literal like emotional breakdown. Yeah. Like I woke up and I was looking out the window. I couldn't stop crying all morning. I couldn't stop crying, Chuck. I didn't mm-hmm. say that to you because I'm manly. Oh, were say. your kids home with COVID too? No. <laughs> that's what's weird. No. No. We're good. It's just, you know, life. Life. After if you really think about life and the hits Sometimes. you take and how long you've been taking, how long you've been fighting to try to get shit right. I don't know. It just you, hit me yesterday like morning. Like you've been st- peeking in my window and I, I, I you feel it right yeah, that's creepy too. right i'm like oh, that's my end. That's i know <laughs> Wait a minute. but it's it's you guys you know women are, are way more open to their emotions than guys are yeah so it was i don't know what you're talking about i always put up the wall i don't fuck around you know you gotta be a badass you gotta keep pushing forward but honestly i think that I think shit hurt women do it in private because when Thank we you. do show it in public we are ostracized so you're a not- lot of women will beat that down because so i'm not going to show anyone yeah. that i am weak in any way shape or form i get that but when i get alone that's when i will i'll show <laughs> Put it, it out mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes mm-hmm. So, okay. aaron after all the conversations we've had yes sir and I tell you about the times going to work in yes. the morning at 5 a.m. Yeah, and you say you were going to cry all the time. Kind of crying on the way to work because yeah. you like you know you know so not what you didn't want to do or yeah. you've had an emotional moment or you hear the right song at the right time when your heart's in a certain spot. Yeah, and you just feel it. Yeah. So you didn't want to share what happened yesterday. You just want to talk about how badass yesterday was. You didn't actually want to tell me the truth. Oh yeah, no, I didn't because it's a pussy. Call him on it. I was, there you I was go. Best, there you go, best, best friend yeah. right there. Yeah. I, I don't okay. need you to call me a pussy. I don't need that right Would now. I have I, called you a pussy? Yeah, you probably would have. No. I love it when you call him out <laughs> no, he so would. much. He would. This is I, a just, great I love it when you call me Big Pop. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Stop it. <laughs> all right. Have we even like said welcome no. to Around the Real? Oh, at yes. All? We've been recording we the whole time. Thought. Ladies, welcome to welcome. Around the Real. Welcome to Around the Real. Welcome to Around the Real. We just got into it and just got going, didn't we? Yes, we did. Uh, who well, do you you mentioned a- Elvis, and that's all you have to say. <laughs> that's right. Getting the conversation yeah. started. Yeah, he did us in with the Elvis, didn't he? Oh, <laughs> come on, that's badass. Go back can, and watch DC you, Cab. But watch can you DC not Cab. make that face? That's not an Elvis I face. That's like a Gomer it. face. Oh, oh, oh. Doesn't he go the oh, oh. <laughs> He does, but oh, Not something. like that, Aaron. Come on. <laughs> it's all way right. sexier than that. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying. All right. So who do we have on the show today, everybody? Who's here? Introduce yourselves, please. Ladies. 
So I'm, I'm Michelle Engelhart, and I'm a producer of a film called Maysville, which is pretty much why we're here. Mm -hmm. um, but we also want to have some fun too. Leslie? I'm Leslie Goyette, and I am the writer, producer, director. Awesome. A few other things. Of, of, of the same <laughs> film. <laughs> of Maysville. And which is an amazing, okay. amazing film. Yes. I yeah. I say. Um, Did you guys watch it? We, oh my God. We fucking yes. watched we it. Adored it. We yeah. adored it. I finished oh, it. We yeah. finished it last night. I think Chuck finished it this morning I, when I, I got I here. I had to finish it in the driveway. I was watching it this morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And my daughter interrupted me for like an hour. And I'm like, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into the movie. It, it's a good emotional movie. We struggle yeah. sometimes because we have a lot of kids. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Between all of us, we have a lot. <laughs> yep. But so, yeah, we did I watch it. Yeah, and I ended up finishing watching it in the driveway. I pulled in here, and I was like, okay, I got 20 minutes left. And I sat there, and then walked in, and Aaron's like, you've been here for how long? <laughs> Way to be observant, buddy. Amazing movie, though. Plot twist at the end. Woo! Yeah, we're going to give away spoilers. No, we shouldn't I'm not, away. okay, this is spoiler alert, no. I'm not gonna give it away, but right. there's a plot did you twist. Understand it, there's a plot oh yeah, I totally. Oh my did. god, and it, it was fucking amazing. threw me for it threw yeah. me for a fucking loop. I was like, what the fuck? It, it's it really great. runs the gamut as to who like. Some people get the whole thing, and some people like don't get it at all. Yeah. So it's just a wide range. That's kind of that's the way it is though. With a movie, that's the way it is. Some people get it, some people don't. Yeah. It's an Appalachian sixth sense. You ain't kidding. You, you are not lying. Back it's an era, yeah. yeah, an era movie of the sixth sense. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's what really scares. Good. You know, yeah. within the first five minutes of Maysville, which is the film we're talking about, yes. um, I, I immediately was like, oh, it's kind of like Stand By Me so far already. That's exactly how I felt. That's yeah. how I felt right Same. away. Yeah. There's so much that I want to hear, and I know we all do, about the, the process of the film. And, yes, but, but the kids, the actor kids. I, well, that's like, that's that's, that's their kids, though. That's your sons. Is that not right? Yeah, they were cheap labor. So. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. We use our stuff. We got them for free, right? So we're like, <laughs> they're they're like, they're you need to free, do this. So we know we could work them as many hours as we wanted. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you we wouldn't have to have a parent on two a.m. Right? We didn't have to feed them much. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. No, we, we did so, feed them. We tried them with food, so we well, use ours too. Well, just tell, saying. Tell, well, we used well, they're to. They're amazing. See, they're but, good. So I wanted to ask you guys personally because our kids have been in our films as we've been learning this filmmaking process yeah. all these years. Okay, when they hit about ten, they they were kind of done quit. with making fucking movies. Like, no. so I'm like, you guys suck. No, they quit on me. All of them. So yeah, but they were so good when they were little. They had fun. You know, it was yeah. like we were what all playing. Happens? I don't, I don't know. know. They're but, not, it's not their dream. Yeah. They're it's developing their own. Cool well, that's fucking for, stupid. <laughs> because they what don't we're doing is bad. Do anything that their parents are doing. I know, that is but true. it's yeah. fucking fun. Mm -hmm. And they get to blow shit up. And I had them shooting guns, and they're making yeah. good badass hey. stuff. You know. By the way, yes, those were airsoft guns, officers yeah, that they we were cool. using when the children were eight years old. Son of a bitch! And you guys as kids are still doing this. So how old are your sons? So Holden's 16, right? Yeah, Holden turned 16 in August now. Yeah, and Forrest, mine, he's 15. And they both look like men now. Okay. They it... do not look any to me like anything like the movie. Mm -hmm. Like we caught them at the very tail end of pre-puberty. Oh good. Right. <laughs> Perfect. Very, like like seriously, two months later, my my son's voice like dropped like eight octaves. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, mom, I could do that for you. Wait, mom, I can't do that no more. <laughs> Yeah, sounds like Elvis. <laughs> they did. So it's crazy. I mean, we filmed at the very last minute of, of their childhood. We really did. That's crazy, and it happens overnight too. So you got lucky that you got through it without <laughs> that happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, that would have sucked but, halfway through, and then their voices dropped. It's like, dude, we got to do ADR through this whole motherfucker now. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so that ha that happened. We wanted to add a line at the end. Mm -hmm. it, it's actually in there, but like, we couldn't ADR it. It was because it was Forrest line and his voice was like a friggin' man. You know? <laughs> no, person. It didn't work. Oh, uh oh. That's okay. Funny. We would have never known that if you didn't say that. No, we would have you never would. known. No, we wouldn't know. know. So what a what a well made going movie. Back to, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, going back to you know you mentioned how the kids don't want to do it anymore, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, with with my kid, I had two kids that were actors at one time, and my oldest, uh, who's also in the movie for about two seconds um he decided it wasn't for him when he was in high school okay 
And he is, you know, he's in his third year of playing college baseball. That's his thing. That's his thing. That's what he wanted. That was his passion. But my younger kid, who's in the movie, Holden, who plays Teddy, yeah. has been acting since he was five years old and has done, you know, television and film. And the same with Forrest. Uh, I don't know when Forrest started, but, and, and it's more of his passion. So that's one of the reasons why I think he has stuck with it is that he's up for the challenge even though he's at that dreaded horrible 15 to 18 year age mm -hmm. where kids kids don't get opportunities much anymore because they'll cast an 18 year old to play a 15, 15 or old, a 16 yeah. or a 17 yep. so they don't have to have a parent on set they can work 14 hours a day <laughs> right. because they're a legal adult yes yes so, we, we understand that one yeah, yeah the same reasons why you used your own kids in the first place it's fucking smart <laughs> yeah. though but here's the cool thing though they, those two kids are badass they are, they are amazing oh my god they're good Actors. together they're so really impressive good. they did do very well so together. Impressive. it's unbelievable how well they did yeah. i mean seriously and i had no clue until i i followed up on some articles i saw you guys had done yeah and i'm like holy shit that was their kids yeah <laughs> It was and amazing. their chemistry, I'm, I'm, their chemistry, now have dope. they known each other their whole life? Or was their chemistry nope. just spot on like that? Wow. Just, wow. Just came no, he, yeah, the irony of it is, is that Holden had worked in a project with Michelle's youngest daughter, Maeve, and he had done a project for DreamWorks with Michelle's older daughter. Okay, wow. Eden. Interesting. Okay. And so... Okay. That's how Michelle and I knew each other, but I had never, you know, worked with Forrest and, and seen what his potential was till one day Michelle posted some of his his work on Facebook. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, here's a little short film my son did. He was so good, so good. And that's when I reached out to her when I had the script to a point to read. Okay. Oh, okay. And, and I knew each other only through, you know, we knew each other from that one commercial that they did together and then we didn't know each other well. It was more like, you know, we were connected on Facebook. And so Leslie just pinged me out of the blue one day. And she's like, hey, I saw Forrest in, in that short film you posted. Uh, I wrote this script. I was wondering if I could cast him in, in this movie. And she sent me the script. And um, I read a lot of crappy scripts. And the book like, really kind of blew me away. I was like, dang. And uh, Leslie's a very... Um, a visual to me, my in my opinion, Leslie, you're a very visual writer. And so, so when I read this script, I didn't even get to page like 20 before I started like bawling. And you guys can probably figure out why. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, dang, I can visualize every single scene so well. I, in, in her work, she's not like prolific. It's very, you know, uh, efficient wording, but I could visualize everything and the nonverbal, everything was like, I could just picture how this was going to be filmed. I thought that was unusual. In addition to just loving the story. Yeah. So um, one thing led to another. I mean, I really didn't know Leslie that well, right? We didn't know. I don't know why she, I don't know. I don't really believe in fate, but it just kind of, sometimes I think things happen for a reason and the right timing, but she just kind of landed in my lap. She's like, you want to figure out how to make a film together? Because I've never done it. And, uh, but you know, I think we can figure it out, Michelle, you and I. <laughs> I fucking love that. Okay. How long ago was that when you guys made it? <laughs> three years ago. Uh, three years ago. Wow. So wow. is, this is the first feature film that you guys done together? Yeah, the first film, period. Jesus wow. Christ. Man. Who does that? It's, Who does it's that? It's been an odyssey. I mean, we have, you can imagine, you guys know all the friggin' bumps in the road. I can't believe we oh my finished gosh. it. On one hand, on the other hand, I'm like, think, you know, of course that mother F is finished. <laughs> right. <laughs> we were sitting but, there, um, Aaron and I were sitting there watching it going, how did they even make this? We were like so well, impressed. Yeah, Just, I know, I know no now. so many aspects of it where we were like, woo, that must have been hard because we're filmmakers that's too. That's so what we I love know. about talking to you guys. Yeah, because you're because filmmakers. We know. You, know <laughs> you love films. Yes. But you know the sweat the equity yeah. and the time and the commitment that it took to do every single one of those shots every one of them and you better believe that we appreciate. appreciate so much <laughs> because we have done so many interviews and so many reviewers and what we have learned too about film festivals people who get you into film festivals and the people who are watching your films they're all journalism ma majors in college they're not filmmakers yeah Often, yeah. 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 Those are not the people who are choosing your films. Correct. Yeah. And 
that's that's what I love about talking with you guys is that you guys can appreciate that shot. Oh God, oh, you no. guys we can ever. appreciate that. What it's a period piece that usually triples your budget instantly, right? Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Fucking wardrobe, Easy. triples. <laughs> okay. I'm talking location, like, put it vehicles, triple. all that shit. You're so, doing all this shit. I'm like. How'd they get I, those cars? How'd they I get know, that that's cow? the first thing we said. Like, was like, how'd they get those costumes? It's, it's beautiful. How did they get it's, that look? You guys did so <laughs> that, it's <laughs> there's fucking a, beautiful. There's a scene where the so old kind car of, kind of goes turning around in a field quickly. Yes, and I'm like, I yep. bet that owner was freaking out. Unless he was the one driving <laughs> the car. It. You did that drive it. it. Okay. I love okay. it. I love it. Um, uh-huh. we, we did a noir film for our first movie. And, and granted, we had no money when we made the Outrider, okay? Yeah, but there's micro budget and there's, I got, I got six bucks in yeah, the camera. We, we got a Around camera the and we got one <laughs> Home Depot light. I mean, that's what we did when we made this, right? But, you know, we're really proud of that movie. It's, mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. But, however, there wasn't a lot of budgeting we had to do. We had to figure out how to make it. But then it occurred to me when I was writing it, I want to make this like a noir black and white because we don't have all the gear. Okay. Well, it right. hides your mistakes. It hides Let's mistakes and honest. lighting, <laughs> and we we were just learning how to the, the preliminary stages of lighting in general. Um, yeah. We had no, and we had no. Like we were like, what's three point lighting? Right, yes. it's one of set, man. It's you gotta one have of, a good yeah. gapper. You gotta love Absolutely. them. You gotta love them, right? right? So we had to learn that in time. But we were like, well, fuck, we could probably pull off a noir because we can do a hard light and just hit it and get shadows and all that shit and be cool. That's what we did. But then I realized, well, shit. We don't have any kind of old school looking towns around Tacoma. Um, we don't have cars that match the era. So we had to make a modern noir. And I just yeah. ended up creating this weird world where it's like, yeah, it's a noir. People are dressing that way. But, you know, they got cell phones and computers and shit. And I was thinking, hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what fiction is. It's fun. You can just create a world. Yeah, That's a what we had to do. Noir, But then we watched yeah. Maysville. And you actually went back Hold to what, what was it the twenties, thirties, thirties? Okay. Hold it all. Yeah. How the fuck? Whatever. So my immediate reaction when you guys are in the fields and stuff and the barns and everything, I'm like, okay, that's how it's gonna be. You know, like when guys do Western indie films. Okay, you're gonna be in the woods and shit. Next thing I know, you guys are in a fucking town, and I'm like, wait a minute. It was unbelievable, Aaron. So there's a there's a filmmaker by the name of. Uh, Colin Neal, he used to be in Seattle, he's in Spokane now, and he connected us to some people in the towns of Centralia and Chehalis, Washington, which is about an hour and a half, so it's, it's equidistant between Seattle and Portland, so between right. Leslie and me. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, he connected us down there, there are two historic towns, lots of antique stores, lots of pride in their old cars, and their heritage, the, the history of the towns is amazing, and, and the pride that the people have in, in their community is, is, is just wonderful. And, one thing led to another, and we just got connected and dialed in down there really quickly. And um, there's a woman by the name of Mary Kurtzbein who connected us um, to some people that uh, found us locations. We found all our lo- almost every single location that we needed within the first day of just going down there. Oh my God. Holy shit. Uh, they took That's us around, awesome. and we just bing, bing, bing. We couldn't believe it. And then all the people. The city of Centralia is known as Hub City USA. And every weekend they have a car show. Yeah. Every weekend in Centralia. Okay. And they're proud so of their we cars. Were, we we there, started attending time. the car shows. Okay. And we started re- making relationships with the owners of the vehicles. And we we're like, would you like, you know, I have no money to pay you. I can't give you any money. Well, I, I would love to have your car in my movie. Would would Is that something you'd be interested in? And they're the kindest, most beautiful people because they've all refurbished these old cars, right? Yeah. You can find these old cars, cars, but they need to look new right. for the time period. Yeah. yeah. We had, I think, 20 car owners that signed up to be a part of the film and bless their souls. Yeah. Every day we would shoot for t- between 12 and 14 hours. And when we when do those street scenes, yeah. you know, we were shooting on one side and bless their hearts, they were all lined up in their little camp chairs on the other side oh, of the street nice. all day long, just, just sitting their with their cars, <laughs> with it. their babies, watching yeah. us do our thing. And then we would have to flip it to get the other, sh- uh, you know, the reverse. Yep. And then they would just pick up their little camp chairs and walk to the other <laughs> oh, side of the street. Awesome. And they would sit all day long. It makes me want to cry. It It makes me want to cry. They're proud of their cars, which is cool because they're proud of their work. Well, Sam, I will tell you, I will probably cry before the end of this. I will not doubt that. (laughs) Which will make Sam cry. Yes. And and after my emotional day yesterday, I'll probably fucking cry. You pussies. (laughs) (laughs) What the people 
in this community did for us without getting paid just because they wanted to help Michelle and I, they wanted to help. Mm -hmm. And and that's what our mantra became is the power of the ask is that we learned that human beings are a lot better than what we sometimes give them credit for. Yeah. People True. want to help people. <laughs> yeah. But people are afraid to ask for help. Yes, they are. Well, and, and so well, some we... people are afraid to help people for certain reasons. Sure. sure. So you sure. have to have oh, the absolutely. right you have to be the right totally. person to open them back up to helping after they've gotten burnt or hurt or whatever. Absolutely. So that's a thing too where it can absolutely. be it can be hard and you can get a lot of no's and you can get a lot of people against you or or saying no or you know not all for it mm-hmm. but yeah but it's, it's about worth it. trust yeah. and yeah. being perfectly yeah. honest mm-hmm. yeah. and following through with what you say you're you going say you're to do. do and it helps that and you have a great story behind you <laughs> like that helps I, I think a lot of them so sam i don't think we realized later when we went down this summer to show the movie at a drive-in down there for the people who were involved. Oh, that's fucking cool, and too. it's like, oh, wait, most of them don't really know the story. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> so it's really? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, here. I just yeah. realized that, I mean, some of them did, but most of them didn't. But they were just so thrilled about it, like a 1920s film. And they wanted, um, the, the the towns down there, they want like a draw to their towns. Um, so it's to draw in tourism. So they thought, how mm-hmm. cool to have in a story, you know, a film, oh, yeah. story, they film like this uh, sure. down there. So that was cool. But it was pretty funny that... Um, a lot of we realized later, like, oh wait, most of them don't really know the story. God, they must be <laughs> they proud of what shocked. ended up. They were like, oh. <laughs> but I, yeah. I think people want to be part of something bigger than they, themselves. They I do. agree with you. They do. I, it's I, just so fun. And how often does that opportunity come along? It doesn't you know, happen very, very often. Not I, in a positive way. I, I, I love... just and I'm sorry, Aaron. No, I you don't go. Mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. But last night we watched. Okay, the Josh Powell. Um, version of what is it that I always watch the Dateline the oh, Dateline oh, yeah. Josh Powell version okay and that's from our area I didn't realize how creepy that shit was but that's <laughs> negative attention you know that's people from around here mm-hmm. that are all collaborating for a negative reason oh, but yeah. when you have a positive reason like what you guys are doing and you're speaking for women and you have a positive vibe and you have a positive story and you have it's all good stuff i think that that says something Absolutely. because yeah, you know a lot of attention is drawn to negative stuff like the josh powell thing i mean everyone knows about that because it was in our area but it, it's so negative and it's so it's dark ew. as fuck yeah. it's so it's gross scary. but you guys have bringing something to the table that's positive and cool and fun yeah to our area is it's it's amazing and i hope you understand the compliment i'm trying to give you <laughs> because no, i'm no, trying to say totally like do. it's always negative totally negative do. negative but you guys brought something you more of it. beautiful yeah mm-hmm. i yeah. think we also demonstrate it and you know we had no but I mean, a very small budget we did have to fundraise we spent the first six or eight months raising money but still tiny budget mm-hmm. great job um, on your I, fundraising though by the way yeah, yeah, we can talk was, about that. Oh, because, we um, will talk about that. I got that on my notes. <laughs> I want to talk about that, but go ahead. Um, but I think it shows what you can do on such little money. So if we can do that on the, you know, less than six figures, it, you know, it shows way we, less more than, than that. Figures. If we got the film incentive, a better yes. film incentive yeah. yes. in the area. We have a lot of talent. A lot of the crew were fabulous. They're all local. Yeah, and they're fantastic. Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go back a second. And I'm here. well, I'm oh, so not oh, trying geez. to be sexist uh, here, but oh, it's way more <laughs> it's amazing right. from women being able to pull off what you guys did. I'm sorry, but it's way more amazing because I'm gonna make a comment about that, and I'm yeah, just gonna make do. it really short. Please do. And I will just say that early on, when it, when Michelle and I were looking, and Michelle and I had, you know, between the two of us, we had been on over a hundred sets. We have worked with so many people. And uh, when we were, you know, getting, asked, you know, asking people, you know, how much do you, you know, this is my script, you know, can you, you know, what is it going to cost me for my cameras, my crews, my equipments, and so on. And some of the quotes we got were just like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we had to narrow our circle and, and we had friends that helped us out. And then all of a sudden it became more of a, a budget that we could 
control. But when, you know, without the networking help, we, we couldn't have afforded to make this movie because when, you know, people were just like, oh, who are these folks? Oh, I'm going to, you know, these are, these are my rates. Right, right. So we had to rely on relationships in yeah. order to get the film made. And, and that's and I will say that uh, over 50 percent of our crew were women, were female. And all of us had never made a feature film before. Everyone had worked on shorts. Everyone had helped or volunteered with other film projects and the women who i mean all of our art department had never done any kind of film work before wow. and so wow. i put together the lookbook for them and i i'm like this is exactly what we need this is what the doctor's office needs to look like this is what the general store needs to look like this is what the emporium looks like and so on and these three women went to town and they made it happen yeah holy shit and you're such a queen yeah, you, she, you two she both ate, are you guys such ate fucking around. Like, holy shit. Our, our, customer, our customer had never worked in film ever a day Beautiful. in her life. I love but it. she's wow. one of my best friends. And I kind of talked her through, this is how we're going to do this. And my, I have a huge uh, background in theater. And hmm. I've produced and directed in several different theater projects through Oregon. So I just relied on those relationships. And I said, look, I'm going to need clothes. And period piece clothing so four different theaters came together and we me and my customer went and we borrowed over 2,000 pieces of oh clothing and shoes from theaters and it was all free just wow. because I had worked for them and I had volunteered and so on for the past you know 15 years for different theaters so we were able to secure all of our clothing for free so we had our clothing we had our cars mm -hmm. Um, all of our costuming, all of our, all of that was free, and that was a huge savings in our budget. Yeah, huge yeah. savings. Two thousand pieces, the wardrobe. That's, Over 2, uh, that's unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Um, this amazing. is a, this is an amazing. indie film we're talking about, Chuck. Yeah, I know. This, this is the film. same where we tell people, you know, don't wear that shirt out in public because you're gonna fuck it up, and then we're not gonna be able to film with it next weekend. Don't <laughs> do that. This just, is you know what? Just give, give me your shirt. Give me your shirt. I'll give hold your shirt. shirt. Give me yeah. your shirt. Yeah. yeah. Do I have to shave by next week? Please do, because it yeah, will, the continuity like, needs to. Yeah. Can I get a haircut? No, <laughs> no. There was one piece that we had to buy. We had to buy multiple blue shirts for our adult Teddy because there were scenes that we were filming out of order, and he had blood on. Oh, on oh it sure, yeah, it makes sense. And then, yeah, you know, so there were a couple of pieces that we had to actually purchase, but ninety-nine percent of everything was our costumer just diving through we're talking about so if you've ever been to a professional theater you've seen their wardrobe departments mm -hmm. yeah. yeah they're mammoth mm -hmm. and to go through piece by piece by piece you yeah. know when you've got your list you know i need to have this kind of dress and this kind of dress and this Lion kind of king shoes. little mermaid <laughs> <laughs> We cast in our town. <laughs> town. town. So what you're saying is to make this film, you're totally out of favors. Yeah, <laughs> you're done. Like, yeah, I think so. I, Leslie might have a different opinion, but I think now we, like, if we were to do another film, hopefully this film can show what we can do. It's yes, yeah, no, it will. Money, a lot of favors. So what could we do with a bigger budget or an investor? You know, I wouldn't. You know? I wouldn't be surprised if the favors are easier to get now. Uh, after, yeah, they after will for be. what you created, they and will that's be. and that's the magic of this. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to go back to. I I loved when I saw what you quoted: the power of the ask. Mm -hmm. That to me means everything because that's what I have been trying to learn this last year. Um, because when you, See, it even makes me I'm cry. so. I, okay. Because I get it. Me I, I, I fuck it. cries all the time. It's, it's okay, I love it. So That's why I, they both wear hats. It matters. It matters because there's there's a humility to it that is very awkward for a lot of people to ask favors. Like Sam does not want to ask. Don't like she it. can't do it. No, because I, don't I think like it. it makes her feel like she is a piece of shit it for kinda. saying I need something. Yeah, I, I'm looking for. Help. I didn't either, Sam. I didn't either. But you get used to it. You know, you start. Yeah. You're like, oh, the worst they can say is no. Is no. I was raised Correct. by a single mother who had no help from my father. So I was raised to, you know, you, and you don't ask, you got pride. You're an independent woman and this is what you do. My mom did it. I can do it. Yeah. It's hard to ask, you well, know, when you're raised that way. 
Yeah. And that's what's funny. My mom, I was a, a single kid or a kid. You're, you're a single yes, you kid. Were single as I was a, kid. a single kid. Yeah. How come you uh, have no? You're lucky you're not single now. I, I, I had a single mother too, but you know, after my father passed away, after they split up, you know, she was on her own. But she was a hustler. She she figured it out. You know, and and as 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 a rough time as she had when I was growing up, and the, and the issues she had, I did pick up the hustle. And it's it's and, and it is a uh, there's a good hustle and a bad hustle. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a there's a manipulating hustle, and then there's one that's based in honesty, and that's where you guys are coming from. You're open and mm -hmm. honest about what you're trying to do. That's what I do every day for our company too. When I'm reaching out to local businesses to see if I can get sponsorship, if I'm reaching out to individuals and saying, "Hey, this is what we're trying to do," you know, and and explaining the the excitement we have for it and why it's such a great opportunity for anybody to be a part of this. You know, I I'm, I mean that when I say it. I don't know if it's going to be, but I do mean it. You know, I mean it, and it, it seems to resonate with the right people. And it's and it is a game of numbers. And I, I I'm sorry, Sam. She's I don't. Yeah, <laughs> the girls understand. Yeah, we we know. Yeah, she's. Uh, anyway, I I, I love that you guys that can do we that. We did. And talking about being genuine in your ask. One of the things we did was we held a an informational dinner for the people of Centralia and Chehalis, and we invited everyone through the newspaper. You know, we sold tickets uh, and we held this dinner and we had a captive audience of, you know, a little over 100 people who showed up. And while they were there, that's where we started. We said, you know, this these are the things that we're going to need. We're going to need a railroad. Uh, you know, a locomotive. We're going to need um, housing for our actors and our crew. We're going to need, and we, we listed off things. By the time we were done, there was a line of people at the end of the dinner all lined up with offers of how they can help. They all wanted to genuinely help. And we had two barns donated to burn down. Bad. Two people offered to let us burn down their barn. Well, actually, I want since you brought the barn the, the the barn burning up. Did you actually burn a barn or burn a wall? No, have... we couldn't burn a barn because of the burn ban, and there's just too much with insurance. That was terrifying, <laughs> and uh, we ended up. Did you just smell me? <laughs> Sorry. <Wow. laughs> so there was a there was a, a a moment there that you know we could we had barns ready to donate it and the fire chief uh chief mac was so on board for helping us any way he could help them make the movie he volunteered to make this a training exercise yeah. so he oh, was awesome. going to bring the pumper trucks and he was going to bring his crew to put out the fire and so on but when we went to our insurance company with this the insurance company was like <laughs> okay yeah sure this is what it's going to cost you oh. and so we could not afford it um, so we had a pyrotechnician who just happened to live in Centralia. Wow. And we reached out to him. And what we learned was that there is a way that you can burn stuff without it getting out of control. So we manipulated the camera. So we built this fence, right? So we built this 10 foot by six foot fence and we put the camera right at the eave at the top of the barn. So where the top of the fence is where the eave would fit on the barn. So from a camera, it's a camera trick. It looks like this wall is the barn, mm, but it's you. actually just a wall that my husband built. Oh. And so we covered it with petroleum jelly. Oh my gosh, okay. wow. Because yeah. the pyrotechnician taught us that it takes a long time to burn. If mm -hmm. we were to put okay. gasoline on it, it would burn up like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we wouldn't have as much time to capture as many takes as we needed. Oh, wow. So we covered this whole fence with a ton of petroleum jelly. How expensive was that, out of curiosity? <laughs> <laughs> How much did that cost you <laughs> in petroleum it jelly? It was like 99 cents oh, for no a ton. Oh, no Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you can yeah. cover Patrol, it. Petroleum <laughs> jelly is inexpensive. Personal jelly no, is I mean, a lot more. Okay, yeah. stop. You know how much we spend, Sam. I'm trying to be creepy here. <laughs> <laughs> I said, then change my name. <laughs> I was just I, I'm so sorry, like, Leslie. I, I didn't mean to make you jump off like, here. How much Stop. did you have I'm to sorry. use? I'm I just sorry. wondered. Yeah. <laughs> a little. It's one thing you should know by now, Sam. A little goes a long way. Uh, okay, a little dab will do you. 
say that again, so, Wesley? I didn't hear you. I said, we got the kind that you scoop. Not oh, okay. Yeah, a little, <laughs> you squirt. Okay. A little, little devil do you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So we, that's how we pulled that off. And okay. then in post-production, we had a post-production team that actually put a top of a barn there and added special effects flames. So we had oh. real flames and we had special effects yeah. flames. Cool. Okay. And and it looks really good when the actor is running away from the barn. It looks I think fantastic. It, it looks really good the whole I, time. I actually thought you burned down the really the barn. I, I did. Really? I did. Yeah. yeah well, the interior well, shots. Well, we, I'm here to ask the hard questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the interior <laughs> shots were awesome. I'm like, I, I think I know how they kind of pulled that off. When you know he's going back in for something in in the bar. Oh, there's so much. Yeah. There's so much we had to edit out because the scene actually went goes really long. The oh, scene wow. actually has Buck knocking over a lantern inside the barn oh. at first, oh, and shit. the inside of the barn catches on fire, and Teddy put the fire out while Buck is setting the out. Oh, I'm giving away so much. Yeah, don't. Yeah, you are. Yeah, don't like, say that. Whoa. Damn. Yeah, don't. Not, the film. spoiler it's brought to you by your film. director <laughs> <laughs> and writer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not really. You're not really giving away that no. much because this wasn't used, right? This, it wasn't. Yeah. We yeah. had to cut the film. It, it, right. it made the scene go on too long. Mm -hmm. But those inside shots, we had a flame bar, which was closer to the camera, which is probably why Aaron's yeah. shaking his head. Yeah. Well, we thought, yeah, we bar. thought you used yeah. a lot of lighting. I've seen that. I've, that. And, yeah, yeah, it's cool. And a lot of lighting. Yes, it, it a lot of lighting. Great. That is one thing about our DP is he is he's brilliant in lighting. He is he was a gaffer to start. He still does that. And oh he, shit! Critical, and he's well, just he was he was one of the gaffers on okay. East of the Mountains. Oh, and great, awesome. Awesome. Had Tom Skerritt on. Yeah. Another yeah. great movie, yes. Uh -huh. yes. Another great. Yeah. And we got I will say James Winters is brilliant with lighting. The man yeah. knows. Oh, yeah, everything that needs to be done to in order to capture um in order and, and, and he knows the pitfalls to avoid too i mean when we're walking all of the sets and we're walking you know he's got his his meters out and he's like what time of day are we supposed to be filming this because oh, i got no joke. Work, when's the sun gonna be <laughs> yeah and on things it. i don't think about yeah exactly no i get where you're coming uh, from. yeah I do. I do the same thing. Like, but thank God I got Chuck and Sam sometimes to help me. And they're like, "Dude, it'd be better if we film this later." Well, I mean, I'm like, "Oh yeah, us, I didn't think of that." The three of us kind of do everything. Yeah, somebody. So when it comes to of... like our movies, like it'll say like our names are in it like 45 Way times. Too many times. Like, it's just, like just, this, this, just, just do the main. That is the sign of a true independent filmmaker. If you film there at least five times, it's just you're a true thing. indie filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and, and that's what's cool about <clears throat> watching everybody in, in our area at least. And, you know, I follow yeah. a lot of different people all over the world um, yeah. making movies, especially from doing this show now, which is cool because we we're, we love this show and what we're doing because mm -hmm. yeah, a we can we can share everything we're learning as we go, right? But we're learning right. from all of you guys. From all of you guys, all yeah. of you guys right. are helping us figure <laughs> shit out. And you know, it's 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 cool to hear that you know from someone else who who's done a, a film like yours that you know you weren't afraid to go out there and and be straight up with people and ask them what's going on and what you need to do this to bring this together. And to hear you guys do that makes me feel better. I don't feel like a schmuck. <laughs> as much now does that make sense you know what i mean i mean literally you went to these yeah you went to this town and you got all this support and i was thinking you know after i read the article on you guys i was like man if you know if that happened to us one day i would be i don't know how i'm gonna hate i don't know how i'd take it see i am in pussy mode right now well, like bad well, like i want to cry right now cry. because no. that shit will hit me hard dude because we have been fighting to make movies for 20 fucking years you know, off and on just to learn the craft. And now we're like at the point where let's let's try to make something, put them out there. You know, and we're very proud of what we're doing. But at the same time, your guys' first film is amazing. It's off the like it's it's on another level, Incredible, you guys. Like, I, and I, I mean that, honestly. I, I watched fucking wait we watch the shit out of what movies. you guys do. Yes, we do. I can't fucking wait to see what you guys can do. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> Leslie, like, this, compose yourself. It was amazing. It was you're so okay. You should be very you're, you're okay. Um, you know, originally, we, so I like goes into it, oh, you know, so and much, hear, yeah. hear someone say something nice is it's really touching, you know, it's it's three years of your life and you dedicate like 
every day to something in that project, right? I know. Say, yeah, I can't say a bad word. Nice, I can't say anything it? bad about it. No, I can't. Uh, I can't I, even think uh, of something if I tried. I mean, it was amazing. So good so for Leslie you. Is, is she's fearless. I <laughs> have more fear. Um, I know, have lots her, like, more fear. <laughs> I have way more fear. You know, she, you know, the script was um, set up in a way, you know, you've seen the movies, you can probably understand this, uh, where we could have just done a short film, like the first 15, 20 minutes of the film could have easily been a short film if we came up with a, you know, a slightly different ending. Yep. Um, and that's kind of where my head was, because I'm just much more conservative um, in risk oh, averse, oh, I think, than Leslie. Um, but one thing led to another, you know, back to the fundraising, we raised just enough money to tell us the story in our heads that maybe we could pull off a feature film. At least that's what was going on in Leslie's head. <laughs> and I was like, well, we could also just make a really good short film with that money and just really show our stuff and then leverage that to make the feature. Um, but no, she wanted to go for broke and she somehow convinced me, but I swear, like I was terrified. I was terrified, Leslie, I don't even know if I've told you this. Like, I felt like I had a panic attack that night. You know, I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah, what let's do it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Leslie's the you and I'm the Michelle. It, because that's right. Because that that's is right. the same and, thing. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm, the, I'm the counterweight. Yeah, that's exactly what yes, it is. Yes, I'm the counterweight. And we, you know, we opened up our own, you know, production company together. And like, you know, half me, I'm sorry, Leslie, but I'm like, I don't really know her that well. Right. You know, so it's no, crazy. Seriously, what though. life brings you, it really... And I did it. I, you know, I felt like the timing was right for me. I wanted to do something that scared me a little bit and pushed me. I do like a good adrenaline rush. I feel like every day of filming was a different type of adrenaline rush. Um, it definitely made, makes you feel alive. And I'm very thankful um, for Leslie for roping me into this. Oh, yeah. I, I really, Seriously? Looking back, I'm so glad. It's been an odyssey, but I'm, I'm so glad to have done it. But I think we could use a little downtime, Leslie. <laughs> But no, no, now is now we're just as busy. Now the film is over. We are just as busy promoting this promoting. film. Yeah. yeah. And we're we're thrilled to be a part of this program. We're so oh thrilled gosh. to be on here this with other filmmakers. Stuff. Which we'd like to let everybody know that appreciate on what TV. we have done. Oh yes. thank you. Yes. Someone little messaging. <laughs> it's it's a uh, you guys. Um God damn! What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> He's today? gonna what do you cry. Well, no, I'm just they're gonna cry. Stop fighting it. Just, just I love accept it. the emotion. I love it. It's um, cool. It's really cool. It is. I'm, I'm it particularly is. honored to be on here with you guys because you guys are women, and I'm a woman, and I just did my first directorial debut. I know. With a movie, I know. And, and you know, well, you gotta get you gotta get color correction in order. Yeah, it's, it's it's ready. So it's so terrifying. It's fixed now. Like it's every fixed. aspect of it is terrifying. I'm glad to it see is. that Leslie's stalking our I Facebook. No, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah, I, fix, I fixed it. <laughs> and I'm watching your programs. I'm watching them on YouTube and I'm listening. Oh, I love it. Thank you. The thing um, about me is that you guys, because of you guys, we learned a lot in the past six months from listening to your programs because oh. we were going into distribution. Who are we gonna sign with? There are so many predators out there. Yes, sir. And yes. what we learned about the indie film industry is that it is not set up to support the indie filmmaker. For it is 100% predatory. Yeah. People mm -hmm. are out to get your 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 art, right? They're yeah. out to get yeah. your they, they want to make money off of your shit. They're going to make money on it. Yep. Yeah. And yep. you're not. Yeah. And you're not. And, That's why we always and, say Jay Horton is a true MVP yeah. because he will tell you straight up and he's honest and he's real and he's so amazing yeah. to watch and learn from because and that's who we learned from a lot so, of, a lot of it yeah. is from jay and jay Horton, um yeah. there's a lot of really good solid people out there that share their information you know we we i started that's learning amazing. filmmaking from andrew kramer for visual effects from video co-pilot you know film riot i had ryan conley teaching me everything that's my film school i swear mm -hmm. to god it and is. my gaffer school for making all the things we use for our first correct films. correct <laughs> correct and then you run into alex ferrari on indie film hustle and you start yeah, hearing saying, his yeah, stuff you know what i mean and then you run into someone like jason horton who is the most humble oh my god indie filmmaker mm -hmm. i've ever met in my life we were on his podcast not too long ago it hasn't been released yet but he is such an open and honest guy and does, you know, he makes, well, what's his motto? I make movies that, that make, make money. money. Here's how, you know, and he does yeah. that shit. And, yeah. and I mean, these aren't big budget films he's doing for the most part, you know, they're $10,000 or less, you know, but you know, he's managed to secure uh, 50, 60 films in his repertoire. 
and yeah, makes a please. living doing it. And he knocks them out from documentaries to narratives. But he puts his time into making videos for people like us who yes. are like, we have no idea he what we're doing everything. and we need yeah. direction. So, he shares amazing. literally everything and he's no shame honest in his game. as shit. No shame like, in his game. He's completely honest about it. And that's mm -hmm. what's cool about him is that he doesn't mess with I mean, he doesn't lie about it. He's just straight up. This is how it is. Well, this you know, is who to, to avoid. This is who to not avoid. <laughs> there's one thing making <laughs> a movie. There's one thing making a movie. But now you guys kind of understand like after the movie, then it's, it's business. It's, yeah. it's a fucking business. It is. And art, then, art time is art time is over. It's time to sell it. Yeah, you now you got to do so many things. When and it's right. no fun anymore at that point, right? Right. <laughs> Especially like, when you don't I, know what you're doing. Go ahead, yeah. Leslie. Right. And and I will say that this is where uh, Michelle and I's relationship really thrived because we had a clear understanding from day one that I was going to take control of more of the artistic side of this project that you know this was it was my story i had the vision in my head this is kind of what i wanted to tell michelle has an incredible business background Love it. that woman can do a spreadsheet like you have never seen before in I your life it. that's it. awesome and it's a great that's creative at all <laughs> i love it as an audience I'll, i leslie let me watch you know i was involved in everything um in terms of reviewing mm -hmm. you know getting like an audience input so to speak or so i did i it was fun to have my eyes on everything, give my input, and Leslie always listened. And sometimes I had good advice, sometimes she's like, uh-uh, no way, do it this way. But anyway, it, it was like, I think we were lucky in that we were a good good team. We complimented each other pretty well. Absolutely. What's cool, in my opinion, is you didn't even have to, I see, I have to sleep with him in order to get that great camaraderie. <laughs> well, whatever, dude. <laughs> whatever. No, I'm joking. <laughs> All jokes aside. Literally, though, Shit, it's hard it, it to find. It doesn't take long, did obviously, to convince you. <laughs> Within 15 off. seconds, she's convinced. You know what I mean? I'm no I, I could never work with my husband. <laughs> yeah, that's a feat in itself to be able to work with <laughs> your partner. God. You guys, I don't. You guys broke them. Birthmark or the freckle or whatever that was. Oh, oh my God! We've had four episodes without talking about the damn freckle. I'm sorry. It's, it's a beauty mark. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not that beauty. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously though, on a serious level, like I, I really have to sleep with him for that kind of. <laughs> oh my god! No, it's I'm cool about it. You I guys, you guys compliment each other. No, very I love well. you. I love it. You guys it's compliment fun. each other. No joke. Yes, well. you do. You, you do. do. You know, and that's that's the secret, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Having a team of people mm -hmm. that, that know their strengths and weaknesses. Chuck, right, you're you're involved, even though you don't sleep with us. Yeah, Chuck. <laughs> us. What? Well, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm just saying you don't. I didn't have anything to do on a Saturday. I thought yeah, I'd come over. I'm going. <laughs> so you, guys, you guys do horror films mainly? Film noir, horror? Uh, no. actually, actually, here's the funny thing. We have done all kinds of stuff from yeah. the very beginning of what we were doing with our kids, where the kids were the heroes and we were the, the evil people. Our first feature film, The Outrider over Aaron's shoulder there, which, oh, he has not his camera set up all wrong. It's okay. Uh, don't See, you're going to screw up everything. Don't touch it. There we go. Um, that was the noir. Mm -hmm. And then we're, now we're doing the GPO, which documentary. is a documentary. the documentary for Sam. And I am the horror guy, the the weird serial killer type brain who wrote a faith based film drama, Say Goodbye, which we are in the middle of filming now. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. Great. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we're all over the place. We don't really have a. In other words, a we're going to make some really scary shit after we're done with all these things. Yeah. But <laughs> we you love know, horror. When, when we, we love talked horror. early on, it's our when, favorite. when we were talking early on, yeah. it was what, 2019? 18. Yeah. 18? 18. We were thinking of trying to let's let's try to hit every genre that we like. Let's yeah. just let's just make a multiple of movies and then see what the audience says. Oh, that's cool. See just what works. That's cool. And that's see where our strength cool is. You guys. Yeah. You're not pigeonholing mm -mm. yourself no. into mm -mm. one genre. No. One of the things that we found out when we were looking at the whole distribution model here and we were, you know, we we had many offers for the film. I bet. Um one of the things that we found was that the first thing they ask is, what's your genre? Mm -hmm. oh, because yeah. horror and comedy are what everybody wants. Mm -hmm. Because there, it will Comedy's sell. hard. There yeah. are people that will watch any horror film made. Yep. yep. And those Literally. are those diehard, beautiful horror fans, mm -hmm. right? It yep. doesn't matter if it's cheesy horror, no. if it's really high quality horror. They, you know, they they love it and they feed on it, mm -hmm. and they're, and they're, they're very forgiving. Fan. They're forgiving as shit, and yep. especially if you put boobs in there. Like, 
And there are people who are like, let's watch a comedy tonight. I just want to laugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Especially now. straight to comedies. Yeah. Yep. So those two genres uh, were the thing. And so when we had to tell people, well, we've got a 1920s drama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. And people were like, oh. A little, really? a little flaccid. Okay. But it's mm-hmm. badass, biggest, I swear. <laughs> but the biggest response we got was, hey, you've got a great film, but you need big stars. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Oh God. Uh, yeah. Attached to this film. Yeah. Great story. We love your film, but we're not going to buy it because, you know, I need I need big names for drama. I'm yeah. not trying to be a liar, yeah. but I thought your sons were big names. I thought that literally. I literally did. don't tell they're them that because so they're their teenage no. years. Well, they'll be big headed. No, but yes, you guys are so good. I really thought that you actually paid big actors for your absolutely for I did your too. movie yeah. with those two guys with those two guys I thought for sure I thought for sure yeah your entire mm-hmm. cast was mm-hmm. was superb yeah. absolutely mm-hmm. especially so especially Wells mm-hmm. that's my fucking oh, favorite yeah. character oh yeah okay Wells is the, Wells is the f- oh my god Wells can, is the fucking man can you get okay. him on our show we love him I love that fucking guy <laughs> I, love I love he would love... on your show and our show Love him. I would Russell love to have would love to be on your show. Oh, Russell fuck. is one of the most genuinely beautiful, kind people you will ever meet in your life. And my son was on a TV show with him for one whole season called oh, wow. Z Nation. Oh yeah, oh, that, wow. that's where I've seen him before. That's it. Oh yeah. God, thank yeah, you. My, my son played 5K okay. on Z Nation oh, yes. opposite of Russell. And I will tell you when and my son was, I think, nine years old when he was playing that role. Mm-hmm. Russell treated my nine-year-old son as if he were Tom Hanks. Badass. Or as if my son were Tom He thought, he treated him with respect, with kindness. Hey, buddy. And, you know, how's my buddy today? It was every single day. And when I, when I approached Russell, I'm like, I have this very endearing loving character completely opposite of anything you have ever played <laughs> but he really is written more like you as the person you are Aww. and i said would you read it and he read it and he immediately just sent me a text with i love this character i'd be honored to play mr wells so yeah, he and He's absolute smoked. favorite yeah. character of mine i fucking <laughs> love would be so fun too. to have on your show he, he's so nice but he also you know he's He'll tell it like it is. He Down to earth. He'd be yeah. entertaining. He was fantastic. Awesome. And and not taking away from anybody else, but no. you know what I mean? Everybody I mean, will amazing. have their own favorite character. Everybody that, yeah. in your to story. Me, to me, Wells didn't fuck around. No, I mean, he, he was, was a badass, dude. He was he a badass. fucking badass. He definitely outshined. I enjoyed him immensely. Whole, yeah. I, I kept great. watching the movie. I'm like, when's he Wells coming back, bro? <laughs> but he has a beautiful monologue when he tells Teddy, you know, there's so many good quotes him, from him. Don't, yeah. up, don't, wait, yeah. don't, don't, don't waste your time. Don't, don't, let tea don't let that tea sit. Don't let that tea sit. Don't let the tea right. sit, bro. And then, he, and then he comes back with his tea later and says the tea is getting cold. Right? <laughs> That's the coolest shit. I love it. It's love it's it. gr- it's great writing. You did a great job yes, writing the screenplay, by the way, Leslie. This is a great screenplay. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Thanks. That was one of the things. Though when we were early on shooting, a lot of the actors said, "Are we having Southern accents?" Oh. And I said, "No." We're not going to do that because a bad Southern accent will take you out of a oh, script. Oh, absolutely. Uh, out of a story like that. Sure. And uh, we, you know, some people might have done it well, but I couldn't, I didn't have the time to really teach a good Southern accent because I'm from Kentucky. This is all based in Maysville, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And so I wrote the script with a dialogue that was Southern enough that it, it got the message across. Yeah. That we yeah. Were in. Do, do you, you notice her accent comes out it. when she says Southern? <laughs> a little bit. But you know what? I didn't even catch on to that. And you're absolutely right. There were no accents in that. No. I didn't even it, catch it when so, we were watching I mean, it. You're fine. That's, it was and that is anyway. one of the best compliments Michelle and I have gotten is that not one person that says, this is an Appalachian story and it's there are no Southern accents. Yeah, didn't and even, didn't even Michelle and I are like, that's exactly what we wanted because the story 
gets you more. You're more invested in the story than mm-hmm. you are in these little elements that yeah. aren't Absolutely. there. That should you'll be. focus on that yeah. accent, if especially if you're not from there. And, and if it's we'll bad, it'll it. throw it all off. It's and, another, but it was, it's sold. Yeah, it's sold. I didn't even I didn't even question it. No, I didn't. And even it's think another about it's that, another said. job on set. You have to have somebody making sure that they're maintaining the right accent and the right tone mm-hmm. throughout right. the entire mm-hmm. every thing every single shoot. Yeah. That's just one more thing to have to worry about on set. Yeah. So. You ain't kidding. Right. So and we knew it was going to be hard enough to recreate Appalachia 1929 in Washington yeah. State. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the middle yeah. of the fucking state. Wow. Yeah. Man. Right. So yeah. it's it amazing. was hard enough to recreate that. So we just, we, we knew just let trust the actors. And that's one of the things a director has to do. Mm-hmm. I agree. You cast these people for a reason. Trust your actors and and the script. So hopefully the wording, the way the characters talk, and I'm going to run off from here, and I ain't never coming back. <laughs> you know, that's Willie's yeah. line. And he mm-hmm. didn't need to say that with a southern accent. Yeah. You knew where he was from by mm-hmm. the way he said it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I absolutely agree yeah. with you with the with the actors. Um, yeah. I, we, we've talked about that on this show. I, I'm the same type of director. I, I want them to do their thing. Uh, I don't get in the mm-hmm. way. If something is off a tad, I may suggest something. But other than that, ninety mm-hmm. percent of the time, they nail it. They that's nail it one way for the time. And if we if we've casted them, we should know they're going to nail it. Right? right. That's the that's the way it is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Casting and is and so you know, important. there were yeah. moments that I needed something redone. There were moments when mm-hmm. I needed adjustments. But when you've got good actors, you've got good listeners. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And when they listen. It was one one time. All I had to say was, you know what? I need this portrayed not vi- up here, mm-hmm. but I need that brought down because it's a lot scarier if we bring it down with a room, you know, just a regular mm-hmm. tone mm-hmm. than if we're screaming this line. Absolutely. And it was, you know, all I have to say anything to any of these actors one time and how I wanted it delivered. Mm-hmm. Done. Yeah, and it, that's what when you have a when you have a good actor, that's what you get. And even yeah, if it's someone who's never acted before, which we have experienced many times, Aaron. I know. Um, so many times, and Chuck, we have experienced this um, <laughs> so many times with people that have never acted before in their lives, and you give them direction, and they follow it. Yeah, and they're good, and they're good, and that's a good actor. Good listeners, yeah, it's so yeah, it's, because they are good listeners. listeners. Yeah, yeah, it's and, that simple. And really. they trust, and they trust you. Yeah, yeah. And they trust you, and they do what you say, and. That's it. You That's got a good it. actor. I had it's my crazy. I had my brother in our last movie. In our oh last my film. god! Yeah. Um, he's not an actor. All no. Right? But he had the look for this character I wrote, and I'm like, I I texted him one day, and I'm like, dude, I haven't cast this part in this movie. You might have like three scenes in the film, but you know, he's all tatted up. He looks like a badass, right? And I'm like, dude, you you could play this character like no other. He's like, bro, you know, I don't act. I'm like, I know, but you can do this. He literally came to set, had no idea what his lines are. Could Nothing. give a fuck. He had no idea. I'm off camera <laughs> with Same the script lines. in hand. He's read the I script. Say the I mean, line. He knows the story, but <laughs> yeah, I say the line, and he just copied the way I said it like, I don't off know camera. This shit. <laughs> so roll the camera, action, and I go, "How you doing, Dougal?" You know, and then he and would then go, he repeats "How you it. doing, Dougal?" And, and we did it. We captured it in his own way. In his own way. There you go. And it worked. Yeah. You and do what you do, right? You do, you do what you, you do. do. You do what you have to do. You do what you do. See, I'm not an actor, oh, and I don't like acting because it's a lot of pressure for me, and I don't like pressure. I buckle under pressure, so I'm not an actor. But Even though you, you can memorize me, every fucking word I write. Okay, she I knows everyone's lines more than we do. I do not think you buckle under pressure. Not I have a good I'm memory. Sorry, okay, well, you don't know how drunk I am, but anyway. You don't know how much cherry vodka I've had. <laughs> I literally would have to get so drunk. If you guys, yeah, if you guys haven't listened to enough or seen enough episodes, yes, yeah, she would. We, I would have we, to get we damaged so drunk. Sam's liver and making if you her watch, act for fifteen <laughs> years. Yeah. 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 If you it's, it's if you true. watch like the outtakes of the movies, you'll see me like you'll see the true like. <laughs> this is how drunk I really am. <laughs> it's cool though when you've got. But I'm just not. I'm not an actor. I'm not a. In, I don't like the camera in my face. It. It's pressure to me, and I don't yeah, like pressure. Well, I get it. So yeah. it's like, yeah. But you bucked up and you did it. I, for I have and you bucked sold up roles. time and again. Yeah, yes. and that's <laughs> that's what it's about. Things will go for you guys. Well, here's yes, the, I mean, right? Like, like, yes, I damaged my liver for you guys. I love you. Thank you for doing that because you kicked ass in the movie. You did good. I love you too. I would have never made you drink, I know. no matter well, how I many times I, I handed to it to you. Or um, <laughs> Well, here's the here's the funny thing, ladies, too, is because like you know, you said you wrote that uh, you, when you wrote your script, you showed uh, the gentleman who plays Wells. You showed Russell um, the script that you kind of based off of how he really is in real life. And when I wrote "Say Goodbye," 
I based two of my main characters off of these two people. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. make me cry, Chuck. And Sam quit. Oh. Because I got Le I got Leslie. Chuck, and you wait, me out. wait, wait, wait. But it's a good call out. Listen up. Sam quit, and you know what happened when Sam quit? She oh, helped. She helped us we pick an actress who's amazing. So yeah. much better. And Sam now feels better about being just a producer for the movie as yep. opposed to being forced yeah. to be on camera, on yeah. set, sitting around for two hours before she has to get into character because you know, she'll be drinking in those two hours to get <laughs> yeah. ready. Or and bored out of her mind can't work. waiting while we're setting up. I shit. guess it's cool better Fiction, in the world yeah. to cast a character based on you than you right, right? I, you know what i didn't even pick her but she turned out to be such a better i mean oh my you, you, god you gave like, her the I'm green so light glad. as soon as you saw her as soon yeah. as i saw her i'm so glad i quit i was like i'm so glad i quit because she's so much better and i'm not saying that to put myself down at all whatsoever like i'm not a bad actor i understand that but she is freaking perfect for the part so it was amazing that i quit because then she got it and she's so much better mm -hmm. i'm still saying my friend quit and now me. and now my ass has to fucking act with this real actress who kicks ass <laughs> and i'm trying to direct he has to be challenged and, and, now. and film and everything else and then jump into <laughs> acting and i have no idea i'm like jesus christ this girl's fucking off the hook Can but you know what? she's pushing me. here i'm thinking we're michelle and i are definitely gonna have to cast you in our next film because <laughs> not me i hope someone you... <laughs> who can bring that emotional connection man a lot of men you know shy away from those scripts i'm thinking <laughs> yeah oh shit. oh yeah well you know what part i'd want to play in maysville i wanted to play the bad guy Ooh. Oh, the antagonist. Love yeah, I love it. The I problem is, he always so wants good. to play the bad guy. It's fun. That's why. Tell us it's about fun. that guy. He you are the other bad guy. Sutherland. He's from Portland. Okay. Isn't he amazing? You yes. guys. He previous. I mean, Rocked he is, has been known for the last like five or six years as a comedian. Okay. Perfect. Is that it's nothing? Not, that, yeah. That, that's I get it. That's funny. That's crazy. But I get it though. It's I get funny. it. He's such a good dramatic actor, and that's how I initially knew him. He was in the first movie by. My oldest daughter, this is going back like a decade. Mm -hmm. He was so good in it. And I had forgotten that because he had done so much comedy since then. Sure. He was kind of more known as, he became more known as a comedian. And so we were casting Maysville. We're like, oh, we thought of Brian. I'm like, oh, he's doing so much comedy. And then my husband reminded me, he's like, do you remember Ghost Light? He was so good in that. And Leslie knew him from other things too. So, God, he, you know, that is the one. That is an actor that mm. just continually gets called out. Like people remember Buck. Oh, like, hell yeah! Hate Buck. Yeah, he's and a fucking like, dick. <laughs> if you can make, well, if yeah. you can make it's an good. audience hate you, so you're good. Yeah. Here's a real question, though: Is he? Yeah, a I, dick? We're not gonna say now that. Think about it for yeah. just a second. We're gonna... Compared to Aaron, or no? Something about yeah. his character. <laughs> I need to. Know. Yeah, he's a he's bad guy. <laughs> but he took care of that little boy. No, right. I, I know, right? and that's that's you love that's, hate him. that's the yes. beauty it's of your dramatic. script. Before you guys do spoilers, yes. stop. I'm gonna cut yes. you guys off. Before you do spoilers, and I understand yes. both of what you ladies are saying, but I also want to say thank you because here you are. You're looking at somebody who got themselves typecast as only being a comedian, and then you remembered something. Right. So thank you because so many actors get stuck. We have a lot of horror stuff yeah. in the Pacific Northwest, yeah. and all these people are only thinking, oh, they're only you know horror people. Yeah. Chuck, that's Still a great point. Don't typecast people, that's man. A great Let, point. Give them a chance. Give them a that's chance, a especially point. someone who's comedic. Well, um, anyone who can do comedy can do any fucking. Thing. Well, that's the thing. Anything. You think of the that's biggest. Right. Think of those big if you actors can do that are comedy, out there. You can do, you can any do anything. Fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> think of Jim. Yeah. Think of Jim Carrey and how good he is in his dramatic roles. Think of Robin yeah, Williams. Yeah. Robin Williams and how good he is in dramatic roles. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that there's how an about, extreme on both sides. Your, there. How about your man crush? Which, Which one? one? <laughs> Which one? I got a bunch. Really? <laughs> My man crush? Matthew Tahey. Yeah, but he's not a, really a comedian. But he, oh, Talk not? into your microphone, Sam. We can't hear you, Sam. I'm sorry, he's not. <laughs> we can't hear you yelling from across the room. No, well, I'm Matthew's just, just Matthew's, Matthew's just sexy. Not <laughs> he's being just a, a badass. Is beyond me because the first time I ever saw him, he was in. Oh yeah, your movie. Yeah. Um, what is that? Oh, um, uh, Oh shit! Oh my gosh! We're getting, the sixties one. I hate being old. Days and confused. Thank yes, you, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank We're you. all movie people here, but I'm the only one paying attention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're just. Oh, days and confused. Um, that was a big cast. Yeah. Really big cast, and that that swooping seventies do he wore in that right? Yeah. Right, and he was funny in that. He was a comedian. He wasn't even but supposed to have a big part in that movie. I don't give a shit. He yeah, did. but he, he had just a, he, he pulled had that presence. Everyone remembered yeah. him. And the director was like, "I need to have this guy." Yeah. Just yeah. saying. Dude, yeah. Yeah. 
That's yeah, one of I'd have sex with Matthew McConaughey, no problem. Yeah, we all know this. Yeah, know. Well, yeah. I know this. He's badass. Yeah, he's dope. So I think I, I could pick up on it too. It's beside the point. Yeah. No, I'd pleasure him just fine. I'd be good at it. <laughs> so, Michelle, talk to me about a good spreadsheet. This yes, that's what I wanted to talk about. Okay. His name, asshole Aaron. Okay, right? so let's talk about. I want to talk to yeah anything but Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, penis. we don't need to talk about Matthew. Um, <laughs> or pleasuring. Him. I mean, we can <laughs> So, as a producer, Michelle. So you've got to you've got to take this 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 idea that Leslie's got. Now you got to figure everything out and get this stuff rolling. And I know you guys are working together and all, but you're 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 like the Chuck. You gotta you gotta do all the numbers and you're all the that Chuck. shit. <laughs> what was it like? And how much when you went into financing? Let's say you know for other people out there that are trying to make movies and get an idea because that's that doesn't isn't talked about a lot. In, no. in, in the communities, especially worldwide. I, I look for that all the time. Like people talk about, yeah, crowdfunding and this, and you got to do that and you get investors. How? How do oh. you do it? Okay. Well, I just want to call out Leslie's also a producer. You know? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, no, we know, but she's already, yeah. her, she, her name's already like, so many times I in the credit. Was, you know, she, she was a young <laughs> this game, you know, when it came to, you know, yeah, because Leslie, you know, and probably like most creators, directors, I mean, it's her film, really. Um, you know, they're, they're going to push and push and push, right? Like they want what they want, they, they want to create the vision in their mind and so you need somebody on the other side of things you know saying, well this is reality and how are we going to mm -hmm. do this so we're, we're, I, you know there's a lot there's definitely some arguments that we have had right yeah. Leslie, like ah, you know and sometimes she would win sometimes i or whatever we would <laughs> go back and forth and a number of things but with fundraising um yeah again i i was i've always been more conservative thinking we need more money um i definitely um just being more conservative also with insurance that was like number one in my brain like you need to make sure we're covered you have your own production company you're liable you're holding the bag you know so i think you know her she's you know her main focus is going off and creating her her the vision in her mind and mine is doing it safely yeah. and not like sinking our ship you know she, she had that in her head too but like she's the creator so her incentive you know she, you know she i really want to tell my to story yeah mm -hmm. for sure oh, her story yeah. right so yeah yeah, so I don't know. There were times where Michelle would have to tell me we can't do it like that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I would have, and she would say we can't do that. And I never once said yes, I can to Michelle. Right. I said okay, I have to find another way then. Right. Yeah, and she was thinking on work. that level That's for beautiful. you. That's yeah, beautiful. but how many times how in your head say well. stop telling me that? Because <laughs> <laughs> I hear it from Aaron all the time. Yeah, you do. So an example was guns on set, right? And this comes oh, up, yes. you know, okay, okay. it's pretty timely or whatever with the whole rust set. Oh sure. yeah. Um, what happened there? But like we, we had guns, you know, you've seen the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, talking to the, I remember talking to the insurers, you know, I was like, okay, we have a few scenes, we have guns, we'll, there'll be blanks and we'll make sure that we'll have, you know, we had, a, we had a really, um, an AD with really, um, her, her top priority is safety. I think we just got lucky with that, by the way. Super important. Um, mm -hmm. But, the insurer was like, um, you, how many tens of thousands of dollars do you have to insure this? You know, and we're like, well, but there'll be flights, you know, we'll do this safely. We have a, you know, we're a safety officer on set, blah, blah. And they're like, well, it's going to still cost you an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. So we had to get creative and we just, um, and rightly so, right? Yes. <laughs> no, that's a very that's high liability issue. Like, now I understand with Russ, like, wow, that can really friggin' happen. Yeah. Well, Even same with the, the fire stuff. stuff too yeah. i mean that, that can happen, happen will happen so we mm -hmm. got toy guns we yep. got rough guns they're truly toys though yeah, yeah. I get it. And then, so much. A toy. there's so many toys that look so real though i mean you can totally get away with it nowadays and that could be a problem too because if you're True. if you're filming in public like the downtown scene let's say if we had a gun there and there are people just you know people in centralia just doing going about their business like oh they're filming a film but um, oh yeah <laughs> they that it's a film set so yeah. that can you don't know how many times yeah but we were not filming with you know the toy guns in town it was pretty much just isolated yeah uh yeah and then there's so much you can do in post-production these days it's pretty cheap um and they do it well you know yep. you can fake the the um you know the shot yep and if you don't go about it the correct way you just have the cops showing up in the woods telling you what asking you we have whoa. we've had we <laughs> have, we've had visitors from sure. many officers. times oh many, many times. visitors put the rifle down son <laughs> hell why is there a 10 year old holding a gun hell yeah we it's were not running. real sir why do you have a camera it's not weird sir residents are calling in 911 saying that you're carrying a gun down the side of the road <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, that things that we've got. happened with our proof of concept mm -hmm. uh our proof of concept we it started pouring the rain so we didn't get this one shot with a coffin 
Okay. Oh, yeah. So we recreated a few days later down here in Portland, and oh, I'm wow. like, let's just go over to the park. <laughs> and so we went to the park because it had a tree. The trees were close to the parks, to the trees that we had shot up in Washington. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to match the background. Well, I didn't. It's the only time I did not call someone. Okay. And let them know. So the neighbors saw a coffin oh, God. Uh, in the park they're and thinking. called the police. And they're like, there are people carrying a coffin out of the woods. Isn't that amazing, though, that they do that? I still I if fucking Karen. dressed in normal clothes. <laughs> and I mean, sure enough, you know, the guy comes up and he goes, just to let you know, you're, my body camera's on and you are being completely filmed. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I've been told there's a coffin. And I'm like, well, if you look, it, it looks li- like a Halloween co- coffin because it's wooden. <laughs> And you know, here it is. And you know, we were just shooting a little, a little, a little you know, sip, three little... second pieces of footage here to yeah, real quick put proof of concept. And oh, he kind of chuckled and wanted to know about the film and when's it going to be released. And that's it was really usually, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More, that's what usually happens. More that's importantly, can we get your body cam footage? Because we this would be great behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, <stuff>. no shit. <laughs> Unfortunately, one time when I was down filming a little short, we were doing, I was doing with the kids and we were down in, um, where were we? Fircrest. You one? Yeah. University. Place. Oh, yeah. Okay. Down by the Creek. Yep. And I'm, I'm, I'm dressed up in this alien outfit, you know, and the kids had these, you know, lightsabers and all this shit we were doing, but they had these guns, you know, but they were going to be these laser guns and shit because they're fighting the bad alien guy. Um, Wait, what movie was it? Intruder. Oh. Intruder. Yeah. We're, 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 we're leaving. And we filmed everything. We're leaving. And we were walking by everybody. That's what makes sense like, when yeah. we're leaving. We're fucking leaving. I'm walking out. And, and, and unfortunately, all my kids are light-skinned. So they all go <laughs> kind of white. So two cops come walking down the trail at us. And they stop us. They're like, excuse me, sir. We uh, got some calls that some uh, you were hanging out with some kids down here in the woods <laughs> doing some weird stuff. And I'm like, well, we're just making a movie. These are my kids. And they look at me. And then they look at the kids and they go, and then they start talking to the kids like, is this your father? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. But here, I know. But here's the thing. I told my kids when we left, they, they covered my ass and said yes, but they could have said no. Right? <laughs> no, we never met this man in our lives, officer. I would have been in handcuffs. <laughs> That's how scary it was. And I'm like, oh, God, you guys got my back. You guys want, let's go get some ice cream no. real quick. Thank you. I kind of wish they would have said no. <laughs> That's it's fucked up. Sam. Another one of those times that Aaron reminded me, Chuck, you should have been on set. Yeah, I need Chuck. <laughs> need him. But isn't it weird, though, when you're out doing that and, and, and you, you, you're, you're, I hate saying steal a shot, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, steal you, a you shot. Go, you go get a it's, shot. Like yeah, that. you got to steal a shot. Who the shot. fuck is watching? <laughs> they see you out there with the fucking camera. I mean, it's pretty obvious you're trying to create something. It's not like you're just standing out there with a torch and a fucking coffin going. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like that. You're yeah, obviously doing like something. It's pretty clear over your shoulder. It's yeah, pretty clear. But they just. They just want to be a buzzkill. Yes. They do. They I, do. I admit, we were You didn't put were... me in your film? Well, I'm just going to call 911. <laughs> how, da- how dare they have fun doing something while I'm stuck in the house? We were foolish when we Fuckers. were younger, though. We kept putting the cameras in bags and carried the guns in the open. <laughs> so that was That's probably our did. mistake. That's what they literally did. We did do that. Hence yeah. is why I would have to have a bottle of cherry vodka. <laughs> oh, my God, you guys. It's fun. It's so much fun. So, um, yeah, okay. Okay, back to Maysville. Yes. Movies made. <laughs> well, you let's... guys are doing some of the post stuff. Yes. And you guys are getting ready for the distribution aspect. What made you decide to go the route you have? Because I was having issues with my Vimeo this morning from your guys' wonderful screener you sent me. So I just put it on Tubi TV, where it is now available. <laughs> so, yeah. that being said, let's talk about who you chose and why you went that way. Wow. Well, that was an odyssey in itself, wasn't it, Leslie? Um, yeah, yeah, as we said earlier, you know, it's a pretty predatory um, uh, industry out there, distribution. Mm-hmm. And we've learned a lot. And there's still a ton more we can learn. Um, there is a Facebook page. What's it called? Predatory film. Uh, yeah, Alex Ferrari put it up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, nothing, you know, any, well, a lot of the distributors that we were interested in, you know, you get these honest filmmakers who say, yeah, this this is what happened to us with this distributor. Yeah. This, yeah. You know, don't believe whatever. They're not transparent, mm-hmm. charging all these expenses. Um, they're really not going to market your film, even though they say they will. You know, all this stuff. It was, it was really a little bit demoralizing. And um, 
initially we, we went with a distributor. It didn't work out. I can't see more. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, you know, it's been, again, it's been an odyssey. But Leslie, I think we, we had three offers that we were seriously considering um, through our sales agent. And then we kind of just decided to veer off and look ourselves and really tapping into other filmmakers. So you, bud we, you budgeted a sales agent for... Budgeted? You? <laughs> Did you budget a sales <laughs> agent? Or just like, a they they budgeted like, 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 we never budgeted a sales agent. Should have. Yeah. We, we forked it over for, yeah, yeah, a sales agent. But in the end, we, we kind of went on our own. Mm -hmm. And okay. found indie rights. And okay. I don't know if you know anything. Oh yes, about we do. Mm -hmm. Was because we had watched your episode with Linda. Okay, yeah. you guys spent over an hour talking yes. with her, and you really grilled her. Yeah, yeah. You uh -huh. guys really asked the questions to her that the filmmaker wants to ask a distributor. Yeah. And sometimes you're a little bit afraid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to start off with a bad relationship. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. you know, you want to keep everything smooth because God. Gosh, they're selling my film, right? Right. Yeah. And and you guys were the ones who were willing to kind of poke at ask her. Those I, questions. Well, I had a feeling about so, Linda. Yeah. I can tell you because I reached out to her when we finished the Outrider. Um, and wanted to distribute the film with her. <laughs> and she was pretty straight up with me. So I figured when she was on her show, I'd be straight up with her. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what and I felt. She's basically, know, and she's, yeah. she's great that way. That's she how she is. communicates. And I love that. And yeah. and to me, that that transparency of who she is and how she speaks is goes right probably with every contract she writes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I think simple, that... Simple and direct. Yeah. Direct. So here, here's her my... Her contracts are all... What we learned is her contracts are all the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right? Most publicly. Yes. I love it. And I love that about They're not necessarily easy. No. They're not easy. Some t I mean, you got to go through some hoops and you got to do some work. But mm -hmm. but they're yes, direct. They're very she they're puts very the work on you. Yes, she mm -hmm. does. Right, right, right. But she doesn't yeah. charge you no. seven thousand exactly. dollars and says that she's doing the work, right? Right. Correct. She says you need to do the work. Yes. And yep. when you do it, we'll be ready and we'll right. move forward. And, and this is how you. we're going to move forward. Yeah. So there are no hidden fees. There are no hidden costs. No. And from what we were able to research and what we were able to find is that the accounting that is now going to be presented to us is very black and white. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a lot of gray and we no. have these fees and we didn't discuss this, but we have these fees. Yeah. So, yeah. you know what? We got to the finish line and we could have gone with much bigger names for mm -hmm. distribution. Yeah. yeah. But we really, really, really did not want to be taken advantage of. Right. Good for you. Good for you. You know, was our best shot to be. Well, the move you got to be proactive when it comes to that stuff, and especially, I'm I'm sorry to say it again, but especially being women and being a minority in this industry, you really do have to watch your back. You really, really do, Absolutely. and more so than other people, maybe mm -hmm. because of the fact that we are women and we, it's easier, you know, to get one over on us sometimes, and so we really got to watch each other's back and. Be proactive. Absolutely. What is, it's easier to get something I'm over sorry. a woman. Are yes, you because I'm we're sorry. I've been people. married for 108 <laughs> years. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking Excuse about? Me? I can't get anything well, past my wife. She probably hears me talking too. right now. I Oops, sorry. I love this. Here's, here's an example. Here's an example, Chuck. When we were looking for sales agents, sales agents quoted Michelle and I a higher price oh. than some of that's the it, other that's... filmmakers mm -hmm. that we had spoken to prior. Oh, I know what happens. We I just never see other it. Filmmakers saying, how do you feel about this sales agent? Do you feel that they really represented you well? And how much did they charge? You know, how much did they charge you? Yeah. And it was X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. And then when they talked to us, that price went up. Yeah. Cause they can get you. I'm just saying, as a man, mm -hmm. I don't think you guys will ever know how that feels. No, no. they won't. No. They won't. I mean, they work with me. These what? are my partners, and well, they don't even get it. No, <laughs> wait, wait. Okay, I got to ask a quick question, <laughs> ladies. Not forgive completely. me for a moment. Why am I on the show? Because I'm not a woman, and I'm not black. I'm just, you know, we need, we need, we need to, we need to. Minority. Yeah, we need the, we need the white man voice on the show. Too. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate you being here. Um, <laughs> I get it. I know. I know the sound. I know the tone hey, of the voice. Chuck, yeah. You open I know doors it. for people. Okay? That's right. I, yeah. That's another reason. I do. I, I, I am a gentleman. Thank you for noticing. Here, you know, some people forget. I, am a I, gentleman. I always try to think outside the box with this stuff. And we, you guys hit on it earlier about everyone being, needs a white guy. Sorry. Yeah, but being <laughs> being a woman filmmaker and 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 a team like you guys are and doing it, you know, you you got to leverage that. 
You know, I, I get hit up on all the time about, hey, you're a black filmmaker. You know, you could do this, you could do that, and blah, 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 blah. You could get this kind of grant, and this kind of grant, and do this and do that. And I always kind of shy away from that. I'm like, dude, I'm just a dude making movies. You know, why do I got to add the black in there? But now I start thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? Why aren't I doing that? Why aren't I utilizing that? Well, and for to, like from to, a woman's to do. standpoint, and a woman should do the same yes, fucking thing exactly. because if you're gonna get hit with a higher, you know, mark when you're you're talking to a sales agent, they're gonna boost that uh, up a little bit because yeah. you're a woman. Why not use the woman card on them? Fuck them. Well, that's how, Fuck and that's exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that's. Exactly I gotta use it. the black card on it. Well, well, and I'm, no, being, I'm kind of being about, serious here about it. No, no, I was gonna but, comment on it, but I'm gonna let Sam finish first. Oh, go ahead. Well, I'm just saying it's not about using it, but it's about, you know, the hills or the mountains that we've had to climb as women or black people or what have you as minorities uh-huh. to get to certain places that other yeah. people can get to very, very easily. Like Chuck. And so why not use it? I mean, we've had to work so much harder for all this time. Okay, sorry, but I'm going to use that card at this point. If I can, I'm going to because I've had to work so much harder up till now to get to the same place as say you have or someone else has that isn't a minority. Exactly. So yeah, you you do I'll, use I'll it. Honest, you can I never fairly thought of it. it. I never thought of leveraging that in <laughs> any way, shape or form. I wrote 35 grants to try to get funding that's for me. That's a fucking lot of work, by the way. I look at those grants, you, those things And are how many horrendous. of that did you get a response from? Yeah. Zero. Uh, see yeah. what I'm zero saying? Zero funding. And, you know, yeah. being a woman, it didn't help me. Mm-hmm. It gave me mm-hmm. absolutely no advantage whatsoever no. because a lot yeah. of the responses I got was, you're a first-time filmmaker. Mm-hmm. 90% of people don't finish their first film. Yeah. yeah. And that's fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's that a fair, fair statement. That I understand. Yeah. Um, but it didn't matter how much I tried to write within my grant to prove that I can do this mm-hmm. or to prove that I will finish it or to prove, you know, who I am and my work ethic and so on. It just it just did. It, it, it landed on deaf ears. And it's shitty, too, and, right? Because I'm looking at grants right now. Right. And, and we have a finished film. We have a finished film. But you can't find a grant that has a finished film most of the time <laughs> you, I know it's, right you yeah. know what i mean i got well, a movie i could no. show you the fucking movie i'm ready to go well the, the, the other tricky part though is the fact that you that we also have the outrider that shows us as having a finished film so my question for leslie mm-hmm. i never went back to what i was gonna say before shit but my question right now for leslie is having written 35 grants and getting turned down on all of them now you have maysville underneath your belt so to say mm-hmm. will you write those grants for your next project because now you have proven yourself as something. Well, and I have proven myself, but I, I was going to say uh, in conjunction with, you know, you probably won't finish it. The other, um, some of the other feedback that we got was that you need to have a message. So a lot of times grants are granted to people who have to have, and, and, and this is why documentaries get funded left and right. Exactly. It's because they Not have a message. <laughs> well, and, we didn't try well, they're they're fun. I mean, there's usually uh, if there is some something that is underserved in the community mm-hmm. that needs a spotlight focused on it is what is going to ultimately be the recipient of the grant. Sure. So if you are highlighting um, the LGBTQ community mm-hmm. or if you are highlighting women who are abused or if you are highlighting poor communities mm-hmm. or if you are highlighting minorities that are not represented fairly in media, if you are highlighting something, even if it's a narrative film, right? Mm-hmm. but if there is a message behind it, that's what's going to usually win your grant. Well, and- not, not a film that is based on entertainment or just a story to tell. Correct. And unfortunately, those films, which is what our film was, it was based on, you know, it's an entertainment film. Mm-hmm. That's why we made it. You yep. know, it's just a story. Great story. Um, that's why, that's where the indie film community is available for us, you know, or a studio is going to pick you up. Yeah. Correct. But unfortunately, yeah. we just found that we needed to have some kind of message. That is we absolutely did apply, right. And sometimes that's um, an excuse too, by the way. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. a lot of times, and I have found that, and I haven't really expressed this with the guys because they're guys, and they don't sometimes understand, but there are hurdles that you run into being women in for this sure. industry, especially <laughs> because it is mostly men. And so for you to be coming to someone presenting a film done by a woman, it is looked at quite differently mm-hmm. and completely different 
um, expectations and qualifications mm -hmm. are looked at and, and stuff I like that. Reminded so, of that, I do. <laughs> I like it doesn't, you know. But so I actually, I, you I know, have the same so blinders, Michelle, honor. when it comes to things. It, but it's true. It's, it's true. Still, it Unless does. you have something to make this company look good, then and if you can point that out and make that look appear to be good to them then they might consider it. But if you're just going in there without that, you know, that's why you got to use it. That's why. I'm right thinking. there. Yeah, you, on one hand, that's why you got to use it. On the other hand, I don't want them to know we're women. Like, I know, cool. yeah. You know, that's one thing Michelle yeah. and I asked of our sales agent, please do not convey that we are female. That's such don't let question. anyone know that we are two female filmmakers yeah. because we kind of felt like, for one, they wouldn't watch it. In all honesty, you know, mm -hmm. the, the the distributors wouldn't watch it. Or two, they would play with those numbers again uh, with Michelle and right, I and right. say, oh, well, you're lucky. We're only charging you $35,000 worth of marketing. And you're like, you know, yeah. you're lucky to have us. <laughs> this, it's so the reason why I do it is so because stupid. I don't want to get favors because I'm a woman. Right. So I don't want to throw that you out there and then get a favor for that just because you think that it's going to do your yeah, business good too. to have a minority yeah filmmaker see that's where i whatever. differ yeah that's that's where i'm if like I've, mm -mm, if i'm black nothing, and they're gonna throw me it. some money to help make a movie i'm <laughs> taking that shit i don't give <laughs> a fuck yeah. i don't give a fuck because you know what thank you good all right move on now let's make our movie that's i mean it's that simple i don't take it personal that way I and guess. i support that 100 percent, Aaron. i don't know how else to do it i mean well, if you're I mean, gonna get it get it so whatever way you gotta hustle however way it's so hard i thank my mom for that i think we would all agree getting the finances for the film however you gotta get the single most ridiculously hard thing to do right you can prove yourself a thousand times but trying to find that network of and it really is it's a lot of nepotism yeah it's a lot of oh uh well you're so and so's grandson oh well, it's who you I know, know a lot of yeah. in you mm -hmm. because I, mm -hmm. you know, again, my grandpa's going to get your back and right. you know, you're, you're definitely going to get lots of support around you because of mm -hmm. who you are. Right. And you're definitely going to make a great product because you're surrounded by brilliant minds, right? Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. because you earned it or right. you have this great merit, but that's what we learned is, you know, when we were looking at festivals during the pandemic, right. uh, when we were looking at festivals, the, the the thing that people look at is who made the film, first of all. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the name in front of the camera and what's the name behind the camera? Yeah. If there's not a name in front of the camera or a name behind the camera, you are not getting into Sundance. You yeah. are not getting into these oh, bigger not, festivals. No. You're just mm -hmm. not. That's what I love they, about I mean, indie rights. Mm -hmm. It's because they're not like that. And you do not, and it's it's woman run, you know. So there, no. But seriously, it matters because of the fact that that kind of shit doesn't matter. They're looking for the quality of your film, not who yes. wrote it, not you're this person or true, that person, or true. you have this. Yeah, and Linda this said that. Or that parent, yeah. or you're in this family, or that family. It doesn't matter to them, and that's why I love them because it doesn't matter. I I always believe in empowering yourself, whoever you are, you know, as an individual, whether you're, you know, whatever race, color, creed sexual orientation doesn't matter just empower who you are sell yourself you know it's you, such you, a you, higher you be, mountain you when you're be not, you when you don't have a family member that's somebody and though. believe in yeah. you and believe in who you are and and that right. will resonate after time now it I may not know. happen on your first film but if you keep consistency going and with who you are and how you portray yourself and what you really mean honestly like you guys did with this and with the power of ask and, and getting that engagement from the community that there alone shows how much strength you guys have as a oh, team. Oh yeah. Absolutely. That alone, that could absolutely. sell anybody. If you could go to these distributors or sales agents, I don't give a fuck who it is. And you guys tell them how you got a whole community to get your fucking back. Yeah. You already have Seriously. an audience. You already have. We got a, we got a city. Audience. What do you mean you don't want to fill? Yeah. You, you, it. you have it. You earned it organically. That's how I look at it. And it's Not like, if they don't want to jump on that, fuck them. There's yeah. someone else who will understand it and see it. And that's yeah. how you do it. That and, you, and you but you it. just got to keep fighting. And I guess that's why I cried you because <laughs> you, you, it's always a fight, one it, it way or another. It always is. And if people, it's always, oh my God. It's it's a a yes. you're right. It, it, never it's never ends. always it's a fight. Easy. Yeah, not as easy in this business. No, oh, Every God. Step in the way. Leslie and I are like, oh my God, why can't one thing be easy?
easy. Right. Right. It's and it and it doesn't happen. I go way. to bed every night going, oh my god. Well, ladies, <laughs> Aaron, I'm, I'm, you and your dreams, dude. Yeah. Ladies, I'm glad to say that <laughs> but, this was something yeah, for you that was hard. easy. So thank you for being on around the reel because <laughs> getting on fun. here was pretty easy. <laughs> this is the fun stuff. Awesome. More and it's it. so, and I'm still bummed that we missed the um, the, premiere. the premiere in Seattle. Oh, I know. Be, between these guys moving it. and I, like I said, I ended up you, sick, and I ended up sicker than bad. we even realized oh. I was sick. So yeah, thanks for trying. coming too, right? What's that? Didn't you have a grandbaby right around that time yes, too? Yes, I did. Yes, yes. 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 Sam we did. had so much yeah. happen. There was like, a lot of shit going on. And he's now, yeah, he's two months old. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, my first grandbaby. Yes. I'm yeah. gummy. After the first gummy, it's just, it's just more work. Yeah, trust me. It's, it's, yeah, between that and the dog, I'm. I'm no wonder no I'm no no crying so much now in the morning. But here's a quick reminder for you, ladies. Yeah, I, I segued into that, so just <laughs> look now. look closely at your screen. You are looking into the sets of four other eyes of people who are just as fucking delusional as you are. <laughs> yeah. Here's a great example. Yep. Pretty see. much. We, like, so fun. we created a movie. And I thought it was pretty good, and I thought, hey, anybody will actually put it on their platforms because somebody will make some money off of it. Mm-hmm. So when Aaron and Linda first were talking, and we were sharing an email, you know, so I was seeing everything that Aaron was sending, and he was seeing everything that I was sending, and Linda said no. <laughs> I was like, the fuck you mean? She said no. Well, I never yeah. expected anybody to say no. But she didn't like, say no. Well, no, I mean, she, she said she'd take the movie, but right. it probably won't she sell because well, it's black I can't and white. I sell it, but I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, because she, it's a black, she, and white film. Nice. black and white film. She was like, in, Amer- in, Amer- in America, don't sell them. won't film. However, when we did distribute on our own, Ukraine loved us. Yeah, we did all right. Oh, yeah. But here's the thing with, 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 with filmmaking. The Ukraine and <laughs> Red Street <laughs> Virginia. That, yes. 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 Right? They're, they're all about our podcast for some reason. <laughs> yeah, they like Here, our podcast too. Same place in Family Ukraine. drama. Yeah. We have the Here, family here's drama. the kicker though. And that's what's cool about, about filmmaking Kensington. that I hope every filmmaker understands. It's a fucking long game. Yeah. yeah. You got to you gotta play the game and it's a marathon. Yeah. We, we did the Outrider and put that out in December 2019. It's finally starting to hit other platforms right yeah. now. We self-distributed it in the beginning. We switched over to Film Hub after Linda said she probably couldn't sell it. And now it just got picked up by Tubi. It's still not on Tubi yet, but it's coming. Okay, it's been yeah. delivered. It's ready to go. And I'm excited because now we're on Zumo. We're on Amazon Prime. We're on Plex. Uh, Plex and we'll be on Tubi. Just like Maze Two which is now movie. on Tubi TV. $2,000. $2,000. $2,000 <laughs> $2, $2 to $3,000 movie. So now, he keeps... I, I, I keep lowering I the price. Either way, really, either way, we did it with friends and, and we just yeah. fucking won the thing. Cool. And it, and now there's potential in this movie still. It's, Can it's I get never some gonna credit die. for being your writer though for 16 years on this dream? Oh yeah, that. you you've been a writer, Can Sam. I, I give you that, okay, and it's you. gonna pay off. And so it's Chuck hang in there. because he's been his best Fuck friend yeah. this whole time too. But Sam, <laughs> but Sam, Sam's riding the boat like this. I mean, she's. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Sam's like, when is fucking gonna stop? <laughs> And I'm just like, crazy. come on, man, just even it out. We're fine. I love having a conversation with Sam every other day. She's like, when is this ever going to happen? When make is this going to happen? Can we get some money? Like, can I please have some money? Because I just want five bucks so I can go see my grandson across the bridge. There's a toll. It's going to happen. There's a toll. It it's going to happen. It will. You wait. You watch how well your movie's going to do. Her, <laughs> oh documentary, her documentary can, can is so good, you guys. Bucks? Her documentary is so good. It's so good. It's 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 amazing. No, but it's um, yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun to watch it. It's crazy. Well, Let's and, and documentaries documentaries are Great what stuff. people are so into right now. The pandemic threw people into documentary heaven. Oh, you know, yeah. that's what people people love a good true story. There's, oh, yeah. I mean, we we can have all the stories we want to that are fanciful and made up. Mm-hmm. But nothing is me- ever more interesting than reality. Than doc, well, I don't know because I'm a documentary person. I love documentaries. That's why I did one. But I loved your movie. Like I loved it. I loved it because it pulled me in. Like I felt like I was in there. It's and that's crazy really? because I yeah, was really worried. I, I was really worried coming on the show because I'm like, I just don't think Maysville is going to be something that they're. Oh they're my God. God. We watch Everyone everything. in the world yeah. watch Maysville. We it's watch, amazing. We watch it's, everything. It's so good. I appreciate the filmmaking in general yeah. for anything. That's why I don't understand how their filmmakers can rank on any movie ever made. Really? When I see filmmakers hating on a movie, Absolutely. I'm like, how the fuck yeah. do you do that? Yeah. I'm like, Absolutely. I don't get it. Absolutely. We need to be lifting each other up yes. and holding each other up on our shoulders is what we need to be doing. Because I don't care. I will never say anything negative about no. another Someone who filmmaker. Even if it, the film is not for my personal taste, you know yeah. how it you may talk. not be, be something that I enjoy, but I know that that person put their heart and yes. their soul mm-hmm. and their time into that 
to create something. So how in the world, and you know, there are filmmakers that will go on to social media platforms or wherever and pan one another. Yeah. I just can't do that. Not I just can't I can do, do that. Yeah. Because no, even no. if it's, it's not a, it's not what you, to your standard right, or right. what have you. Hey, we are it, all on this boat together, together and we all need to be rowing together. I watch there is no time for no. being just, dismissive no. of anyone's work not at no. all not at and all I, I, even I, studio I movies experienced some pretty negative reviews matter of fact i think um outrider has two stars maybe it has three. Wait, it's still, it's three. It's hanging in. I'm sorry, it's still you, hanging in there. I don't. I don't. I don't still compare. Got, I don't compare reviews. stars to anything anymore. There well, are but, some high budget, really good movies that people just sit there and bash out. Bash. I can't believe this one scene, and then they give it one star. It's like, yeah, oh, it's stupid. I don't. You yeah, know, it's, reviews there are don't matter. They, they, they don't matter. They don't matter. But the thing is, yeah. is that when you see other filmmakers doing it, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. Because even if they, oh, okay. even a studio movie, they're like, hey, that movie wasn't for me. You know, that's not my style. Mm -hmm. it, they can leave it at yeah. that. But to really rank yeah. on a, even a studio movie, right. do you know how many people are involved to make that? Mm -hmm. How much time it takes for all of them? Yeah, they may be paying big bucks, but so you, fuck, so they're you, all doing what we're doing. You don't, you don't agree <laughs> with Martin smart. Scorsese bashing not Marvel? Not at all. Not no. at all. And I no, love Marvin. I, and I love all right, Martin well. Scorsese. Cancel Marvin next week. I wouldn't cancel him. I'm just like, bro, you know how much this shit. It's just not his style. He could just say, yeah, that's not my thing. He well, I lose that. respect for people that do that, to be honest. It's kind of silly. I really do, because that's, yeah. yeah. It, it, they it's definitely silly. stick in your brain, right? Yeah. You get one mm -hmm. bad review, and that just sticks with you. But you got to remember well, all the does. really good, supportive filmmakers. For the most Absolutely. part, the vast majority, I think, are truly positive and supportive. you got to be. You can't True. be doing this if you're not. Well, no, with a movie exactly. like yours, I'd be surprised if you got a bad review at all. But yeah. our movie <laughs> got some pretty... We no, it's rough interesting reviews. because Michelle and I did do an interview a few weeks ago, and it's getting ready to hit, I think, next week with a, a, a very well-known publication. Oh. And, you know, Local at the end or... of our, we had like a two-hour conversation with this reporter. And at the end, you know, I asked, I said, well, you know, you've asked us all these questions and you wanted these backgrounds. I said, can you share with us how you feel about the film? Mm-hmm. And this person is extremely well articulated. And he said, uh, and it, 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 you know, it, in an honest fashion, he said, the thing, the only criticism that I really have for your film is I could see you were in a box. And he goes, I really felt that your film and this story needed, it, it could have been told on a much larger scale. Um, that he compared us to Stand By Me, uh -huh. which is what Aaron said or mentioned earlier, yeah. and yeah. Um, Out of the amazing. Africa. And oh, he wow. said it's more of an epic story, <laughs> and I wish yeah. you would have had a bigger budget. I wish you would have had more of... Okay, can you give me, like, one of your millions? Because I know you got many, um, yeah. and then maybe no, I can make fair it, enough. Like, Fair enough. Up. And I think Stop I, I, think I hear his sweet. point. Yeah. I think I hear his point because we've been... endearing that he... You know, he, 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 you know, he, he understood this was an indie film. Yeah. And hell Did yeah, he really I'm in a box. Though? Yeah. <laughs> he was, I mean, I'm in a box this big trying box. to make a film this big. Right. And I'm literally running on a hamster wheel, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 like, honestly, can you give me some credit? You know, in a way, I get it. But yeah. it, it's kind of a compliment, though, in a way. It's a backhanded compliment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, because I can see what he's saying. Compliment. He yeah. can really. out of that. I mean that alone. Right, you know no, what I mean? On, because dude. if you when you watch when people watch this film, they're gonna sense that that bigger scale. Yeah. Because you it should be. You can see it. You can see it there. And but it, it, you know what? It, it what you guys were able to accomplish doesn't take away from anything. No. And that's what's cool. The story is sold. I, I bought all of it. You know, I had no idea where I was going in this movie when it started. And I didn't feel right. any I wasn't pulled out of it not at once. Not at, at all. At all. At all. Nothing pulled Zero. me out of it. In fact, Zero. in fact, knowing that it was indie film and which is how you need to sell this fucker will yeah. really resonate because and, and not I, I'm because, because yeah, that's not where because people are gonna go, level, Fuck, they didn't even have any money and look how good this is. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. that's how you sell it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is story, it because that's the story for sure. Yeah. You have no reason to park, not guys. be the most proudest bitches ever in the world right that's now. Right. Because that I mean, literally, it's amazing. It's, it's beautiful. Fucking amazing what you guys were able to do with nothing. I mean, oh my God. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh my God. It was and a I, fucking long road. So I'm I, not, I, I don't even doubt it. The and the journey's not over. I love that. I know that for sure. I've used this analogy before for 
conversations and I think even maybe a couple times on the show. So, you know, you're talking, they're talking about putting you in a box and the fact, and you bring up the fact that your, your, your feature beautiful doesn't have any names in it that everybody knows. So let's go back to a feature that had names in front of and behind the camera. M. Night Shyamalan, Mel Gibson, signs. Mm -hmm. Movie made in a box because (laughs) they didn't have a budget to create an invasion. Mm -hmm. So they made everything on a farm. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with being in a box if you're good at being in that damn box. Yeah. And your guys' movie fits. And it's Wait, perfectly their done. movie's way Beautiful. better than... I didn't like Signs, but their movie's good. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... You don't have to like Signs, no, you don't like but... Okay, I don't like I get Signs. Your, I get your point, so Chuck. And you know that. what? That's a, that's well, a gotta, great When you're in a box, you get you get more creative, right? You do. Right, and you that's do. what you have to do. Yeah, but you, you can... Think out of the box. And I think how passionate... It shows what you got, though. Yeah, how passionate a filmmaker is and the cast, the crew, and everybody resonates on film you you just get a sense of it you can and feel Leslie, it. bless your heart for you believing in your story and believing yeah, that dope. people would want to hear it and because you know what i've written a million things i love writing i'm a writer but god i don't have the courage like you do to and i believe in my stuff to a certain extent but to put it out there like that and and risk your just your heart because i know your heart was in that story i know it for a fact i could tell i could tell watching it that your heart's in that story so you know what? You go, Queen, yeah. for for putting yourself out there, putting your story out there like that, and believing in yourself. Because I can't do it, and that's yes, amazing. You it's amazing. You're, you're it's badass. amazing it's to me. It's funny you badass. say that because I have I have always been a closet writer. <laughs> me too. I'm always afraid <laughs> too. to me show too. anyone my writing uh-huh. yeah. because <laughs> I say writing. It's like letting someone see you in your underwear. Your soul, you know, right? naked, because, pure, not even underwear. <laughs> Come on. Exactly, Let's because be some people can judge your level of intelligence. Yeah. Some people can judge, you know, your creativeness. People just judge everything that you do, right? Everything. Yeah. And well, when you know that you're bearing your soul. I never let anyone yeah. read my writing was when I reached out to Michelle. Good for you. And, um, it was a lot, it, wasn't it, it? it? It wasn't naturally believing in myself. I needed, I guess I needed Michelle too to believe in me yeah. because, um, yeah, I have about six other scripts and Maysville is the only one that is very, uh, uh, how do I say it? Very, uh, it's just a drama. My favorite kind of writing is old Stephen King. I'm a fan of, um, uh, Firestarter. Me too. The Dead Zone. Me too. <laughs> That's where my writing is mostly. It's mostly a little bit more on the um, thriller uh, side, not horror because I'm not into the knives killing people. But I like that kind of writing. And this was the first time I had ever let somebody read something I had written. So you really touched me there, Sam, by well, saying that. I mean, it's true. It's true. I've, I've, I've struggled to get people to read my stuff. So it's kind of a touchy for me because my own family won't read my writing. And I've tried and I've tried. I've given not it this to family. Them. You know, I've given it to them. They, 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 they're not, they don't, they won't. So that kind of breaks my spirit in a lot of ways. So bless your heart for putting yourself out there like that because I know we'll what that takes. I know way. what it takes. And you know what, Michelle, thank you for reading her shit because, <laughs> <laughs> you know. It I matters. Mean, honestly, it does matter. It matters. It really does. And you need support like no other. And when, especially when you're doing something that's unconventional, you need that, that somebody support, anybody. And Absolutely. Michelle, you're, a, you're so awesome for giving giving her that support and you're so amazing for putting yourself out there Leslie you guys are a freaking amazing duo Fucking and it's dynamos. been a, so fun talking to you Fuck yeah! <laughs> for me especially you so because for having us on. it's inspiring yeah so much. It, it's 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 a pleasure yes. meeting you guys yes and it was an honor to be able to watch your film Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just fantastic. And for thank your... you for watching it. Oh, so fuck. Completely. It was it was great. I was, it was completely so entertained. Was we so good. at the end of that movie, our jaws were dropping. Yeah. I'm like, how are they gonna throw that ending on me, we're bro? Like, how they do that? It's what beautiful. the fuck? <laughs> we it is suck. Beautiful. Yeah. Didn't even see it coming. Um, you know, did not feel like an indie film to me. No. At all. So, oh my god. From the no. first shot, I'm like, holy shit, they gotta. They did good. Who's the cinematographer on this? This is fucking beautiful. Right. What the fuck's yeah. going on? And, 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 and parallel with the cinematographer, I am going to just kind of throw in the composer there. Oh, God, oh, I yeah. forgot about him. Great. Yeah, we, we noticed that, too. Oh, fuck. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, because um, 
Michelle and I spent so much time working with our amazing composer, Christopher Kennedy, who is ironically in Vegas. And so he lives in Vegas and there were, you know, Michelle's in Seattle, I'm in Portland, he's in Vegas. And it was always, you know, he was so patient, you know, Mm -hmm. we want this or we want that, or we want this or we want that. And, you know, it wasn't like a, here's your soundtrack, boom, here you go. It was a work in progress. It was building and building and so much. And I told him, you know, this is, I'm old school. I I, I, I want to do the Joe Dante's. I want to do Rob mm. Reiner and I want to do <laughs> Steven Spielberg and I want to do Ron Howard. This is the kind of film I grew up with. Yeah. And that's what I want with Maysville. That's the sound I want with Maysville. This something that you would hear from yeah. the 90s or the 80s. I, I you know, you. these are, you know, this more epic sound. Mm-hmm. And, and I insisted no banjos because I did not want any kind of hillbilly <laughs> reference. You know, these are <laughs> Appalachian people, but I, I don't want people hearing banjos. Because what do you, when you hear banjo, what do you think? Redneck. Deliberate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm like, I can't wait for the scene where they're going to have a black guy hanging from a tree next. Where's that at, Maven? <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. So yeah. I, I, I don't want any of that with my film. I wanted to focus on, you know, the story. And there's a lot of emotion that happens, mm-hmm. you know? There's there's a pretty big scene there where, you know, you the mother emotion, and the son yeah. are being taken from each other. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we, we needed to make sure that we're stirring that little emotion in the audience so that we don't lose them here. Right. Yeah. You could you could really lose someone if you don't do this right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I was really proud of, of the finished product from, you know, not only how did it look good. We knew that it looked good, yeah. but it needed to have the right sound with it too. Yeah. So we were really lucky in finding a really good composer that I felt he absolutely nailed I it. felt, you know, he really brought brought a, a a good finishing. You know, I, I I say, you know, when we have the box, here's the present, and then we hand it over to the post team, and I said, now you guys have to put on the ribbons and the bows. Mm-hmm. I was going to compare it to an ice cream sundae, and so I always, like you put I the always, cherry and the yeah. whipped cream, you know, like yeah. And mm-hmm. I always say it's the salt it's all... on the steak. I mean, it, it just enhances the flavor. <laughs> we all like different <laughs> shit, apparently. Yeah, that's yeah, how we I do. Do. Um, He put Wrong the salt. Thing. He put the salt on the fucking steak because it's. He put the cherry on the whipped cream on the. <laughs> I don't it's, know what it, I don't want to know what he put the cherry and the whipped cream on. Just stop talking. <laughs> it's cinematic. Your yes. film is it, your yes. film is very cinematic. It's so good. You you well, captured you so complimentary. all the elements, oh, you guys. God. You should be very. We don't very have proud anything we can say that's not. I mean, no. we don't have Mm-mm. any. Mm-mm. I I kind of okay. So I'm not gonna lie. Like halfway through it, I was looking for something. Like I'm like, can I just one thing that I can just one thing that I <laughs> why are you trying to see? She's I trying don't to know. pick on something. Because it's fun. We're filmmaking her now. Things to call out. That, I'm uh, I had a friend call out that uh, we have a license plate, Leslie, that still said Chehalis. Okay, well, like, I didn't even notice that. So I, I, I caught, I, I caught the Chehalis license plate in, you know, Kentucky. Right. I didn't you catch know, shit. I, the fun I didn't stuff. catch nothing. I say, Do you know our budget? <laughs> right. No, yeah. our budget. Yeah, as, okay, well, as, as filmmakers, anything. as filmmakers, Not we can right. all see the the challenges of making a movie. Chuck and I were talking about before. Yeah, we, we can pick up on things. We watch movies differently than most people do. Yeah, that they yeah. won't see things, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm sure you guys watch our movie, you're gonna see all kinds of shit. You're like, oh my god, what's it? Oh, yeah. you know, yeah. it'll start yeah. off with a mistake. You'll, yeah, you'll see. but we could see the challenges. <laughs> like, you know, when the when the rain is coming down, I'm like, you can hear you can hear the audio shift, and I'm like, oh, I know what they did. I know what they yeah. had right. to do. You know, but that, you know, this isn't Hollywood. We don't have that kind of thing. But you guys you did it in such work. a great way that it's it's so small. It's flawless. Yeah. It's so that you good. can't tell. And that's where I'm like, this is that production value of an indie filmmaker when they're ready, when you guys are ready to yeah. take the next step. You know what I mean? You guys are right fucking there. Incredible. Yeah, you guys are right there. Yeah, when you take God. swear to God, ADR work is one of the things that we always hard. talk about because it's oh. fucking hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so and Aaron and I had we had to do it in the Outrider and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So we know what a room sounds like. And then when yep. you cut to the close-ups, you're like, wow, that sounds funny. Yeah. So we need to fix that. And yeah. then all of a sudden, it's like, wow, they're in a quiet area doing the ADR work. And it's, you know, and then the room was so echoey and everything else. So I get those kinds of things. But those things don't throw me off from the movie Not experience. Those are the Plus things that I think of always forward. after the yeah. fact. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. that's the yeah. rough stuff. It's, it, those that's, are the things that's that, but filmmaking, that's, that's a filmmaker watching your movie, yeah, knowing you the struggles it. you have on set versus in post mm-hmm. and how you're going to fix this. Clean it all how do we fix this? Oh, how do we I don't know what this? that's like. We so lost I have a now. teenager here who just woke up who's just going to poke his head in real quick. Oh my quick gosh, and say please. Hi. Yes. Oh, where is he? 
Where is it? A little yes. farther. Oh, there he is, bro. There he is, bro. What's up, That's my man. man. That's my man. It's 30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Lazy ass. True teenager. Hey, you know what? I love it. I'd sit on my ass, too. Celebrities. <laughs> fuck them. Hey, Celebrities, man. yeah. Whatever. You know, yeah, he, uh, he, no, he knows he his sacri- worth. He sacrificed he himself his for his worth. family. He knows his worth. He's a badass. <laughs> I don't care. He worked 14 hours a day for two weeks. He's fucking fine. <laughs> No joke, he gets to sleep as long as he wants. I say. So okay, before we end the show, I was we were talking about. Why grants are we ending the quick. show? You well, got something to do? Well, we got. Well, no, we were talking about grants, and I wanted to oh, tell, yeah, yeah, tell yeah. everybody about you know no skim. Uh, what is it? I, hang on, it's nofilmschool.com. Yeah, go there. Uh, they got a list right now of <laughs> grants on filmmakers should know about. There's a ton of them on here, from documentaries to narratives, all kinds of shit. Um, go on to that site and take a look if you got Wait, a movie in pre-production. She's, yeah, she, he has it yeah. open right now. Yeah, I have it open right now. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff on there, and that's what I've been looking at this last week for upcoming features we got. I'm gonna try to get some of that tell stuff. Me well, I do, but you don't care these about that. Are, these are the stuff. boring science. These are the boring things. You don't this like is the things that, that he calls. This is the things. Yeah. We, we had a we had a hey, company I, meeting. Yeah, but I was looking where at where she said, "Aaron, I don't care about this <laughs> shit as much as you do." Thanks for calling me out. Okay, fine. Go Aaron on. now calls me three times a day. Yeah, because <laughs> he's like, he can't talk to Sam, who yeah, lives with him and yeah, sleeps with him. It's the business side of the thing. Okay, yeah, I shut up. Go on. But I got much appreciation. Let's say thanks for sharing. And the you know taking the time to to fill out those grant apps yes. and do that thing and and not have zero success with it but taking the time to try you gotta yeah. fucking try you, you never know to. until you I try tried. you have to do it I you tried. have to do I it tried. Um, good for it, you it, and it could be that i'm not a good grant writer i mean who knows it could be anything yeah. right we don't know and that's the thing we don't know any of this when we start this stuff right. we don't we have to learn right you have to try I, it was funny that one grant did have a follow-up call and asked me if I'd like to have a follow-up call. Well, I'm like, uh, yeah, I've applied for this grant three times. Absolutely. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. And that really broke my heart because she said, you're not doing anything wrong. And, like, and well, I'm like, well, well she goes, well, where, where's this fucking were, check? <laughs> when we were in the panel, there was one guy who was really rooting for you. And he was like, she only needs 3,500 more dollars to pay off her you know, uh, to pay one last person for post, you know, let's give her the money, you know, you have, and he, he was telling everyone in the panel, do you have any idea how hard this is to get to this point? And she said, but you know, realistically you're a feature film. And I kept saying, yeah, what is, you know, and she just kept going, it's a feature film. How is that really going to affect and reach people? Are you kidding me? Thank you, my See, man. And they don't Peace. know shit. Yeah, they don't. They don't know. My film was entertaining, and because my film was not something that was going to change the landscape or to change people's way of thought, or it didn't have a message. That says who? We. It, I, I personally know film. Know, I personally know independent filmmakers that self-distribute mm-hmm. their films. That have made consistently seventeen thousand dollars a month on streaming platforms, ten thousand dollars a month, another eight thousand dollars a month. They they can make money. They're, this is this is the and and for these these places to to not understand that low budget feature films. I mean, these guys made a feature film that less than ten thousand dollars are making that kind of money on like Tubi TV alone. I just thought alone. Of something incredible. Aaron- I just thought of something. It's ridiculous to me. Why wouldn't they understand he how won't. you make money off this? What do you so, got? So, but then when I turned around and I see who who was awarded the grant, it was someone who painted a mural. It was someone whose dad knew whose dad. <laughs> <laughs> it was my dad knew my grandpa, and that was how it happened. Like, my dad knows your dad, and my dad's somebody. Yeah. That's all it is. And I love murals. I think they're absolutely amazing and wonderful and beautiful, and I sure. want to support them too. Yeah. But you know, it was spray painted on. Buy some taggers yeah. a month after it was done, mm-hmm. and I thought there, there went that grant. Yeah, we love murals too. It's it's free background for our films. Um, <laughs> <laughs> still, still a shot. Still a shot. Um, but no, yeah, no. That that part of it is hard, and it is so discouraging. But I'm sorry, as Maysville, that's one of the things. Okay, I'm gonna be stupid here for a minute. For, so forgive me. I mean, be normal. I walk. I walked. I walked into the house. Uh, no shit. Like I said, I finished watching the movie in my truck because I couldn't finish it at home because life. Yeah. So I finished watching the movie in the truck. I come downstairs and I told Aaron, "For say goodbye, Maysville is our bar." Yeah. Oh. It is. It is. It is. Our movie has to be 
Not that this is a competition. We make different shit, but we're all creatives. But our movie has to be at right here, yeah. matching this for colors, for posts, for everything. Mm-hmm. We already got the composer. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I think. Yeah, we'll see. Well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But still, oh, we that are. We, that is Look our bar. You, it's our bar. No, it is. That is our bar for our next feature film. Yeah. Because the bar from our, our last feature film, every time I try to remind this of Aaron, because Aaron likes to make the joke that, you know, we make our movies so he can make his action fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going I'm to use your guys' money to make my fun movies. Everything that you do, this Maysville is amazing for your first feature. Your next movie will be even better. Oh, God, so yeah. will ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone, you keep going because yeah. every time you go, you step up mm-hmm. and you yeah. take some, well, make something better. Well, and if you're better. starting out like that, oh my God, the world is so open for you. Like it's so not to, not to boost your ego, I might just saying this. I might just be trying to make everybody cry because I'm looking for a sponsorship and Kleenex. Pay attention. There's a lot of tears on the show. Um, content, sponsorship, money. Uh, we all want it. I roll. I roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you make it good. So, yeah. ladies, you've done that something amazing, and, I, and for being a guy who likes to apparently beat women down in more instances that I've Wait, uh, when liked to you experience. Ever like um, you ladies are amazing. <laughs> so don't shy away from the fact that you're a woman in the film industry because you're doing amazing things. You do better Absolutely. than most men I know, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. We are the men you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah, they do better. I yeah. just said what I said. <laughs> I stand by it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we I, I'd have to agree with Chuck before we end the show that it, it is a very inspirational yes. project you guys did. And yeah. I watched it and as the editor of our films, as the colorist in our films, I, I have to say, God damn. Quality like I gotta I gotta I gotta up my game. So congratulations yeah. you guys. Yeah. Seriously. Thank you. Great job. Yeah, Great job. Guys, yeah. You set the bar Puppy fucking high. <laughs> we'll be there for you. So, I love it. This has been super fun. Yeah, that's the thing is that you know, hey, you need something, call us. We can pretty much tell you how to how to how to get it, and we um, will ask you too <laughs> because you got it right. We can like, tell you how to get it cheap. Except for how to, ex- and just to, just to end on a funny note, we just won't ask you how to write a grant. Um, moving forward. <laughs> I love it. Uh, no. I, I love you, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us today on Around so the Real. Thank you for a. Yeah. Bye. I can, I can say again that I haven't said for a while. Thank you for a cup of coffee and a conversation. It has been a blast. You guys made something creative. And from a guy who also is writing something that's a feel good. And I don't care what people for grant write. Grant, people who grant grants yeah. say or not. Feel good movies kind of are needed right now. Because there's a whole lot of negative shit going on in this world. And I'm getting sick of it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. ladies, thank you for joining us down around the reel. And remember, think hard. Because you're thinking anyway. See you guys later. Bye. You don't Everybody have watch nice. Maysville. It was so much fun. Watch Maysville. Watch Available Maysville. on Tubi TV. Yes, Tubi TV. Hey, what, what what other, yeah, and what other platforms, guys? Yeah. Is there anything? So, so one of the things that's yeah. exciting is that the film is doing well right now, or, or that's what we think. We haven't gotten any uh, fourth quarter reporting yet, but they did raise the price um, with Amazon and Google Play and uh, YouTube. Uh, but you can see it on Tubi as well. But those are our platforms right now. I'm sorry for not pushing the higher selling ones, but you guys know the demographics. Are you going to be getting more from the plays on Tubi than you would from Amazon and from Google Play? It depends on what Like the Ava, the advertising, mm-hmm. which is Tubi, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, can be quite profitable. Yeah. Yes, it can. Well, you know, the audience, it's free to the audience. They just have to watch commercials. Right. Yep. And, and most people don't care. Yeah. We'll she just tells us that it's just two completely different audiences. There are people who mm-hmm. want to sit down and get who are the, the bingers. Yeah, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to watch the movie. Yeah, yep. and right. then there are people who are like, I'll I need watch a cigarette. It for yeah, yeah, I need a cigarette. I'll take a commercial. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you can't smoke okay, a cigarette in a commercial on TV. It's only ninety seconds. Literally, shut up, Chuck. I can smoke a cigarette that fast. I, right. I, I have faith. I have faith in uh, the platform to be in. I have uh, faith in the movie. Maybe. Uh, yeah, that will. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Watch that's, it. No, that it's movie. So complimentary. Your it's film's going to be successful. You. It, it will be. It will uh, absolutely give it, give it be. some time. And yes. and when you guys hit some of those numbers, please reach out to us and let us know how you're doing. Yes. We'd love to know. Oh. And um, 
I, quite frankly, I'd love to have you on the show again to talk more. Please, yes, so. yes, 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 yes. And not, not to mention, yeah. you know, I really want, because when Outrider hits Tubi TV, hopefully we'll pop up underneath your movie after they're done watching that, and they'll be like, oh, you might be interested Yeah, no in shit. Movie. Yeah. No, <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, no, we're just gonna we're gonna keep, keep, gonna keep clicking. Right. Click, click, click. Yeah, and my, my plan is to be con- completely transparent with our numbers. I, I don't really care. I want people to know um, oh, yeah. where we're at. I, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not trying to shy away. If it does shitty, I'm going to say, hey, it didn't make shit. Movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, but, you know, if it makes money, I'm going to say, hey, movie was made for a couple thousand dollars, and look how much we did you know this is what we fucking that's, made guys that's and the dream that yeah. is but that's what that's what filmmakers need to do for each other is I that we so. do need to be transparent with each other because that too will keep distributors from taking advantage of us yeah. if i make five thousand dollars on my film and that's it and my film is scored well and my film is shot beautifully it should be an indicator for how another filmmaker might feel that their film will perform, That's right? That's exactly right. It's a measuring and, point. And so as it is right now, because we keep all this information so shielded, mm-hmm. we're not helping each other. Yeah, no. it's like some stupid HR department that isn't seen telling right. all the employees not to tell what you're making. It's like, who? no, it's not like that this way. This I only, is, no. We're H- all independent contractors. We H- can say what HR we want. HR only tells me who I'm not supposed to touch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Creepy Chuck, anyway. <laughs> On that note. Um, On that note. No. Thank you. HR, I'm so the HR proud department of you guys. is my wife. I'm so proud of you guys. Keep <laughs> yes. doing it. I knew this Do would it be more. Good time. That's right. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and, and like you, we were talking about predators and stuff, and I, I was going to say something on the show, but then I chose not to. But the whole aspect is like you, we have, we know people who are business people who are getting caught by predators. Mm-hmm. So it it's, can happen. It anybody. can happen to anybody. Yeah. I mean. You know, a guy who's a businessman, he got stuck. He got his movie stuck like a, for a three-year deal where he can't do shit with it himself now. Yeah. Oh, it was more like a seven-year deal. Oh, seven! Yeah. Jesus, yeah. that's even yeah. worse. No, three years not yeah. bad. Yeah. Three years Another bad. reason why we w- when we watched you guys and Linda was transparent, and even on her show, she said on your show, she said we've never had someone walk away from our contract. Mm-hmm. It, you know, everyone has stayed with us, mm-hmm. right. and it's a three-year contract. Yeah. And so when we had our meeting with her, she reiterated everything that she had said to you guys. And then the contract reiterated what she had said. So now we had three different times she had been consistent in what she said and her words. And, you know, that says something. It matters. It matters. Are you guys doing doing any physical sales with your contract that you have? As far as like, you know, Blu-ray, DVD, all that kind of stuff. We're trying. We're, we're running into some, you know, every everything. Nothing is easy. No. No, no it's not. No, no. And that's <laughs> that's what I'm not looking for. Right I do right. a Blu-ray, and we're, we're struggling a little bit with um, uh, transferring the... Uh, sure, Blu-ray. I get it. Yeah. I um I, I, I was so excited to, to reach out to Linda here soon with our finished documentary. And then I went back and looked at the deliverable page that they have and I'm like oh for fuck's sakes <laughs> I gotta figure out how to deliver all this shit if we're gonna go there and we're missing one thing that I don't know if we can fix or we're gonna have to redo or something I don't know we'll figure it out reach out to us because I have a contact I think that can help you I will talk to you Leslie thank yeah. you well yeah, thank yeah. we'll, we'll call we you can, later you. even though we're having a conversation now. no I'm kidding anyway we'll let you ladies get to your Saturday thank you for joining wow. us today uh, Sam's blowing thunder. bubbles. So Turn your totally troubles into Sam. bubbles. Turn your troubles into bubbles. You did not lose I'm me. I'm, I'm just, sorry. I didn't I'm know you were going with. A statement without I'm, saying a word. I'm sorry. <laughs> Turn your troubles into bubbles. Turn your troubles into bubbles. You know, it. if you if you smoked a cigarette right now, they'd be prettier. I oh, you do a have bubbles right now. So anyway. So when'd you get bubbles <laughs> in the studio, bro? Turn your troubles into bubbles. Moist, moisture and. You want to see some of my bubbles? Moisture no. in the no bubbles. in the studio. Bye. All this beautiful equipment around us, and she's bringing water and blowing it around the room. Ladies. Oh my god, it's a bubble. Don't be such a producer, hard ass. Go you. On Just that note, Charles. Think hard. Blow we, bubbles. We already said it. We well, still say going? it one more time, bro. Well, think hard. Because you're thinking anyway. You can say it again. <laughs> Don't Thank think too hard, like Chuck. <laughs> we'll see everybody later. And you can't have fun right. blowing bubbles. I'm going to go Bye get guys. three vodka. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye I was made for loving you, baby. You were made for loving me. Are you freaking kidding me? me? Not Dude, again. Turn, change, change, change the station. Well, it's kiss. It's it's kiss. No, but we don't know. It's not kiss. It's Aaron. Can you yeah. Give it Stop. All to Who sings that again? Tonight. Kiss. Yeah. Let's leave it that way. Oh, sorry. Well, thanks. Well, I thought this was a show about being creative. I was just being creative. On the that's mic. not being yeah, creative. That's, that's just no being uh, annoying. <sighs> well, maybe I'm trying too hard.
Maybe it's a lot simpler. Aaron, remember, as all good broadcast people know, less is more. So for radio, if I don't say anything, wouldn't that be kind of a buzzkill? It would be a great freaking show. That would give the rest of us a chance to say something. Oh, my God. Yeah, then we'd hear something other than you. Well, I thought around the reel we were going to just have a good time and talk with people. We do, but it's not about you, as we have talked about in the past. It's about our wonderful guests, and our wonderful guests can tune in and become a member of our show. How, Sam? Well, if you want to be a guest on our show... You can go to our website, cccentertainmentgroup.com, and click on the link for guest scheduling for Around the Real, and come be our guest. Yeah, and then I don't get to talk about myself anymore. Be you talk about yourself anyway. Yes. True. Oh, oh, now Chuck's singing. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Because he was made for loving me, baby. Wait, what? that's not all. Is. That's you. Yeah, that's weird. No. <laughs> I sang that wrong. Yeah, he's... Dying. He was made for loving you, Aaron. Just remember to keep tuning in. And I in. wasn't. Because <laughs> next week, who knows what's going to happen. You never know. <laughs>